Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing one of my most requested videos, probably the most requested video on this channel, and that is my 2022 bookshelf tour. Since last year's bookshelf tour, a lot of things have changed. I no longer sleep in this room. It is exclusively a book room, which is wonderful. And since last year's bookshelf tour, the way that I organize books has drastically changed. This bookshelf tour is going to be a little bit different than last year's. This year I'm going to take you shelf by shelf and I'm actually going to go through the books on the shelf and talk about them. I won't be pulling every single book out but I'll be talking about specific books on the shelf that may be noteworthy or may have a little bit more importance to me. I'll talk about some of my special editions as well as maybe the books that I've read versus unread. I am so so excited. It's been long awaited. I've been so eager to do this. I had to rearrange my shelves again before I did it and I wanted to make sure I liked them before I captured it on film for everyone to see, you know. Just a quick side note, my bookshelves are the black brown Billy bookcases from Ikea. I currently have five of the regular size bookshelves and I have three of the half size bookshelves. I really hope you enjoy. I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited to film it. I'm excited for you to see everything. And I'm excited to catalog my collection again to be able to look back and see how it's grown and to be able to capture it in this current state and see what it looks like again next year. So without further ado, this is my 2022 bookshelf tour. I really hope you enjoy and thank you for watching. Starting from the left hand side, essentially I've organized this shelf going all the way across to start with the Infernal Devices and carry on and end with the Dark Artifices, so it's in order for the series, and that's kind of the way that my brain wanted to organize them. To start, we do have this Magnus Bane plushie, and this Magnus Bane plushie holds a very special place in my heart. This Magnus Bane plushie was actually given to me and gifted to me by Cassandra Clare. I met her at BookCon, I believe in 2018, and it was the first time I had ever met her, and I told her that I'd been reading her books for over a decade and how much they meant to me, and that it was my first time meeting her, and she got up from the booth, went in the back, and got me a Magnus Bane plushie. She asked if I'd already gotten one. They were really hard to get, and I said, no, I missed it. They were only giving them to the first 50 people in line, and I was number 72, I believe, so I missed it. And she went in the back and gave me a Magnus Bane plushie, so he means quite a bit to me. And it was at that meeting with Cassie that she actually told me I looked like the Clary she envisioned when she was writing, and I am still dead inside. But this shelf, as I said, is just the Infernal Devices. I do have this really cool wallet. It says words have the power to change us. and. I'm probably never going to use it because I don't want to ruin it, and I would definitely ruin it. And then I have these really pretty, I believe they're Fae Crate, but I could be wrong, I do not remember, but Will and Gem, and then I won't take them down because it's going to be difficult to put them back up, but I promise you they are absolutely stunning and absolutely beautiful. And over here I have this really cool coaster, but again I don't want to use it because I don't want to ruin it. And then I have this really cool mug that says Love Cuts Deeper Than Any Blade, Chain of Gold, and I got this at Y'all Fest, I believe in 2019, and I really love it. It's really, really pretty. So that's about it for this shelf. On to the next shelf over. I do apologize for the weird angle on this. My tripod does not go this high, so you are precariously balanced on an ottoman, so that's exciting. I really hope you don't fall. Onto this shelf, there's quite a few things over here, and to be honest, I've been collecting Cassandra Clare for so long that I do not remember 
where everything came from. To start, these candles, they're James and Cordelia candles. They're beautiful. These, thankfully, are labeled. They're from Paper Crown Candles. This is one of those standee signs that essentially came with a base and you can light it up. It's an acrylic standee sign. I really like it, but unfortunately I have nowhere to plug it in that I could still display it on the shelf and it has a cord on the base so I can't just attach the cord and it gets in the way so it's just there. And then I have Will, Tessa, and Jem on these little acrylic standees. I do not remember where these came from. I really wish I did. Over here I have Chain of Iron. I have one that is just the edition I bought when I first came out. It's the like the collector's first edition. And the other one is one that I ended up winning signed, I believe. And then I have Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron, the arcs that Simon Teen was so nice to send me that honestly when I got uh, Chain of Gold I, I cried. I, I will not lie about that. These blue ones, I believe, are UK paperbacks of the Infernal Devices, and then these are just regular paperbacks of the Infernal Devices. I have the regular paperbacks as well of the Mortal Instruments. This is the part of the shelf that kind of transitions into the Mortal Instruments. Over here I have I Am the Chosen One, I believe is what it says. No, it just says I Am Chosen, and it's a really old iPhone case for the Mortal Instruments. My best friend got it for me, and naturally I had to put it on my shelf. I have this really pretty bookmark of Cordelia. This is what the other Infernal Devices one looks like. It's kind of a stand like this, but this one I can display on my shelf because it doesn't have a cord. I have up here, I have some of my TV show and movie paperbacks. This is a movie edition. That is a TV show, movie, TV show, movie. It just so happened that with the different sizing it looked good to alternate them. And then over to the right, I also have the DVD for the Mortal Instrument City of Bones movie. And I have this little graphic, I am chosen, and a mug over there that my best friend also got me. This little box that everybody's standing on here is a box that Simon Teen sent as promotion, and I just kept it for display because it's really pretty and it has the institutes on the front, so absolutely love that. All right, let's move to the next shelf. Again, I apologize about the precarious angle, but we just moved over a little bit to the right, and over here is just a continuation of the main series that I have for the Mortal Instruments. Right behind here you can see all the paperback editions that I have, as well as up on the top there are some graphic novels. This is the Mortal Instruments coloring book, which I am very excited to have. It's beautiful. I'll definitely never color in it because I don't want to ruin it with my terrible coloring skills. This is a pop socket for Shadowhunters that I was given at BookCon right after I met Cassandra Clare. The uh, event people gave me the pop socket. I, at that point, was in tears and they thought that I had a bad interaction and I was like, no, like, it was the best moment ever. And then they gave me the pop socket and we're like, oh my God, she's weird, but here you go. They didn't say that, but that's what happened in my head. Here I have these really cool hardcover editions of the Mortal Instruments with the spine, the special spine. This took me a while to collect. I actually found these at secondhand bookstores because when they were coming out, I didn't know they were a thing. I believe that they were Walmart exclusive editions and I don't think that they made anything past City of Fallen Angels. I've never seen one. So that's those. And then right behind those is actually another UK set of the, the Pretty Spines. I am missing number six. Gotta find that somewhere. But, you know, it's all part of the fun is trying to find things. And then this is a really cool little pencil pouch. I do not remember where it came from, to be honest. <laughs> Some subscription box somewhere. But... I do love it. It's really cool. It's got obviously Jason Alec on it. At the very top, I have the box that I got with Lit Joy Crate, and essentially it came with a replica of the Mortal Cup, and I kept the box because it makes me laugh. It says, it's the Mortal Cup Jace, not the Mortal Toilet Bowl, and it's just hilarious. Here I have Red Scrolls of Magic and the Lost Book of the White, and I also have this really cool Lost Book of the White pin of Alec and Magnus, and I love them, so it's perfect. Here, this is something I recently got and I don't remember where I got it to be honest. I want to say Waterstones, but it could be Walker Books, it could be it could be anything. Who knows? But it's really cool. It says all the stories are true and it's this really cool illustrated edition with different scenes and I absolutely love and adore it and one day I'll get it signed. And directly behind this is actually one of my favorite pieces in my collection. My brother and his fiance got it for me for Christmas. And it is the Lit Joy Crate 
special edition box and the books inside I'm not going to pull them out but they are the most stunning editions I've ever seen of any book. They're annotated by the author, they're signed, they've got exclusive artwork, they're just the absolute most beautiful books I've ever seen and so is this case and I keep them in here because I do not want anything to happen to them and one day I'll have Cassie sign and personalize them to me but it has not happened yet. Right up here these are another edition of the Dark Artifices, they're the Rune editions, and they're paperback, they're really tall paperbacks. And I found one of these at a secondhand store, I want to say it was Lord of Shadows. And ever since then I've been trying to find the others and I finally did. And they're just so pretty and I love the runes on the spine. And then over here to the right, my best friend Crystal got me this. She's kind of the one who started this massive collection. One day she saw a random UK paperback at the Strand when we were in BookCon. And it was an edition I had never seen at the time, and I'd never had, and she was like, well, I mean, you should buy it for your collection. I mean, wh why wouldn't you buy it? And here we are <laughs> with all, all of these books. And over here, this is the edition she got me. This is the Italian edition. It's really, really pretty. It's massive. Um, I really like the color of it. And, you know, maybe one day I'll be able to read it. Who knows? She also got me a Spanish edition which I believe is somewhere over here. And I'm actually learning Spanish, so I would love to read that one one day. Yes, here's some more UK paperbacks, including Shadowhunter Codex, The Mortal Instruments, The Dark Artifices, and down at the bottom is my Spanish edition. This is one of my favorite book sleeves. I do not know where I got this, but I am absolutely in love with it. It's just stunning. It's the same on both sides. I'll probably never use it because, again, I don't want to ruin it, but it is so beautiful. I absolutely love it. And going down from the very top, this is my first official Cassandra Clare shelf. The rest of the shrine is what you just saw up above. This is the start of the rest of the actual bookcases. This is mostly my original main series, no special editions here. I have a couple copies of Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess because... Are they out of order? LOL, they're out of order, Danielle. Oh god, they're in there. Right, you go where you're supposed to go. Don't embarrass me on a bookshelf tour. Don't let them know that I put things out of order all the time. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hello? Hello? Okay, perfect. So right behind this, I have the Shadowhunters Codex, I have the Infernal Devices, I have a couple different editions of Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess because one of them is the regular edition and then one of them is the exclusive collector's edition. So I think for Clockwork Princess in the back it has an exclusive letter from one of the characters to another character and then I think in the back of Clockwork Prince it actually has the family tree on the reverse of the dust jacket so obviously I had to get those. I believe I got them at secondhand bookstores actually because I missed out on them when they first came out. And then I have obviously Chain of Gold, Chain of Iron. This edition right back here is actually the movie tie-in edition of the hardcover. And it's really pretty. I really, really love the way it looks. And then I just have the Mortal Instruments, and then the novellas. I have the Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy, the Bane Chronicles, the Ghost of the Shadow Market as well. And then everything else on here is just knickknacks. Over here to the left is actually a Stelle that my mom got me for Christmas from Litjoy Crate. The box is absolutely stunning. And then on the inside, it's a Stelle with ink. And it's really cool, I really love it, but I don't want to use it because I want to have it forever. <laughs> and this is actually Jace's Stelle, and this was something you could buy when the movies came out. It has a button so that this part used to glow, I have to change the battery. <laughs> and you can take it out and draw on yourself an invisible ink, and then use the light to show the runes that you would have drawn on yourself. And it's really cute. I keep it over here with this, it goes right next to it, it fits very well. I have this really cool art print of Alec and Jace. I love it, do not know where it's from, but I absolutely adore it. And then these two art prints are from the Lit Joy Crate box that I also got from my brother. And then I have probably my favorite piece over here, which is the Mortal Cup replica. This came in a fairy loot box, it was a Chain of Gold exclusive edition fairy loot box. 
I absolutely love it. It is so cool. If you see Valentine, don't tell him I have the cup. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. It does come with a removable glass, which is really nice because then you can actually drink out of it. I haven't yet, but who knows? Maybe one day. <laughs> And then up here, just to finish off, I do have an angelic rune uh, pin, which I believe I got at BookCon, but I didn't know where to put it, so it lives there. On to the next shelf over. This shelf kind of slowly fades into the dark artifices, kind of ended with the mortal instruments. I kind of try and keep the books in an order of the series. Over here we have the Lost Book of the White. Here we have Red Scrolls of Magic. This is a really pretty alternate dust jacket for Red Scrolls of Magic. I do not remember where it came from. It might be the bookish shop question mark, but it's absolutely beautiful. I love Alec and Magnus, so I obviously had to get it wherever it's from. And then underneath is the regular dust jacket. This art print is also from Litjoy Crate. It's obviously Magnus and Alec, and I love them, and it's so pretty, so it lives over here right next to them. I have Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, Queen of Iron Darkness, etc. I have double copies of Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows because <laughs> One of these I ended up winning as a giveaway, and it was a signed copy, and then the other one was one that I had to repurchase when I met her. They had you repurchase the book to be able to meet her, which is, I get it, but it's also kind of frustrating, so now I have the multiple copies. Here I have this really cool Shadowhunter Army pin, which I believe I got at BookCon. I just love it. It's so pretty and stunning, and I just, I really like putting pins up on the top of the spines because it's a good way to display them. Here I have a Herondale Crest pin. This is an Illumicrate exclusive. I just think it's so beautiful, so it lives over here. Here I have a Blackthorn pin. It says, a bad law is no law. I do not remember where this is from, but it is absolutely stunning. I am very pleased that it's on my shelf. Over here, I have this really, really stunning mug. I believe it's from Lord of Shadows, but it might be from Lady Midnight, but I'm pretty sure it's from Lord of Shadows. And it's from Illumicrate. It's absolutely stunning. I really, really love it. It looks really pretty over here with all the blues. And then behind here, are special editions of the Dark Artifices. I do not remember where these came from. That's part of the fun of collecting so many editions is I don't recall where they came from, but it's just absolutely breathtaking. All of them are. I like don't want to touch them ever because I don't want you to do hear this spine just crack as if I didn't ever open it before <laughs> because I didn't really. I don't want to damage them. I want to keep them pretty forever. All of these editions are stunning. I'm not going to pull them all out, but I'll pull Lord of Shadows out. This one I believe is purple. It is. It's just absolutely breathtaking. You hear the spine crack on that one again. I am obsessed. I'm absolutely obsessed with these editions. I want nothing to happen to them. If any of you know where they're from, you can comment down below and be like, oh, Danielle, they're from here. I just don't remember and I don't want to say the wrong, the wrong place. All right, on to the next shelf. This shelf is just a statement shelf for me. I have all these beautiful editions of the Mortal Instruments and these are probably my favorite editions. They're just so beautiful, so stunning together. And I didn't really know what to do with them. Okay, so we're not, I mean, this one's beautiful. It just came out. I don't have a home for this one yet. Still love this one, but this one's not gonna go on the shelf ultimately. But look how pretty the, the shiny edges. Are you kidding me? It's just stunning. But this one's not gonna live here. <laughs> these are the ones I'm specifically talking about. They're all these cloth bound editions and they're just so stunning. This is the anniversary edition of the Mortal Instruments City of Bones that just came out from Walker Books and I love it. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I just want to stare at it all day when I got it. I was just mesmerized. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> what? It's stunning. And then I have the 10th anniversary of Clockwork Angel and of City of Bones. These are the Waterstone Rune Editions. I'm missing Lady Midnight, which is sad. One day I'll find her, but it is not that day. And then Queen of Air and Darkness, of course. And then I have the Waterstones Editions of The Lost Book of the White and Red Scrolls of Magic. Over here I have A History of Notable Shadow Hunters. This one's just a really cool book. I really like this. I believe it also comes in black. I just haven't gotten it yet. It's the same exact book. I don't know why you have two different color choices, but, you know, alas, I digress. And then I have these really pretty editions of Chain of Iron and Chain of Gold that are Walker exclusive editions. They are just beautiful. I mean, look at that. 
Absolutely stunning. I remember when I pulled these out, I was like, are you kidding me? How are they that pretty? And also here in the corner, I have this stained glass from Le Joy Crate as well. It's actually all of the mortal instruments. It's the mortal sword, the mortal cup, and the mortal mirror. It's absolutely stunning. My mom got it for me for Christmas, and I just, it's so beautiful, and it goes so well with these cloth-bound books. It just really, it really makes a statement on this shelf, and I am in love with it. I met Cassie recently again at Y'all Fest in South Carolina about a week ago, and I brought this edition, I brought Clockwork Angel, and I brought Queen of Air and Darkness to get signed. I've already got City of Bones and Lord of Shadows signed by her, and there's definitely some other ones that I've got signed by her, but not on this shelf. So yeah, one day we'll get Lady Midnight, and she'll be beautiful and pretty and at home, but for now, she's a stunning shelf. Gonna go ahead and put this one back, because I, again, don't have a spot for her, but she looks happy enough there. And let's move on to the next shelf. This shelf is probably one of my favorite Cassandra Clare shelves. I have probably said that a million times already, but I just love the way that these colors worked out. When I was building this shelf, I was so hesitant. I had so many different colors to work with. I didn't know what to do with all of them. Originally, these paperbacks over here were up on the top, but I didn't like the, the way that they looked with all the color schemes up top. So I tried to bring them down and I just love the way it turned out. Do not remember where these are from. <laughs> not tell you. I'm sure if I opened them I would know, but they're just absolutely stunning. And over to the right over here is the Shadowhunters Codex. It's the Nephilim Guide and it's from Illuma Crate. And like, just tell me that these little book pots are not the best things ever. This is the Shadowhunters Codex. And then obviously it says Glaive Approved on the back. And it looks just like it's a book in the library. I am obsessed with it. Right to the right of it, I have the Midnight Air. This is something I got from Waterstones, and it's just a short story for Magnus Bane. I love this. Unfortunately, when Waterstone sent it to me, you can see it. They sent it to me and didn't protect it in the rain, and it got a bunch of water damage. You can see it on the dust jacket, and they wouldn't let me send it back. So I just have to replace it one of these days, but she's still a beautiful book. I just do feel bad that she went through it, you know? Over here I have this really cool Shadowhunters pin. It is from Dreamy & Co. It says stories offer a thousand fresh starts and I believe it's Chain of Gold inspired. It's beautiful. I have Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron down here. I believe that these were the tour editions. When Cassie did a tour in the UK, I believe that when you went to the event or if you were there virtually, you got these books. I'm pretty certain that's what those were. This is from Y'all Fest, my recent trip to Y'all Fest. They were giving out samplers of Chain of Thorns and I am very excited about it because I can't wait for Chain of Thorns. This, I'm not entirely sure where it came from. It says there is no better distraction in this world than losing oneself in books for a while. It's so pretty, it's just a pencil case, but I wanted to put it on the shelf and show it off. And then right behind it, I have the Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron editions of Illumicrate and I want to say Fairy Loot and I don't remember which one is which. To be honest, I think these are Illumicrate, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. I'll pull one out so you can see them. Like, wow. Wow. <laughs> Stunning. And then over to the right over here, these are UK paperbacks. These were one of the first sets that I tried to collect after I realized I wanted to collect Cassandra Clare books because they're just absolutely stunning. And then on the top is just a mass market paperback that came out for City of Bones in the United States. And I just absolutely love the cover. So I had to get it, of course. But these editions are immaculate. I absolutely love them. Over to the right is another art piece from the Lit Joy Crate. It's obviously Clary and Jace. And right behind them are the most recent books that I've been collecting in this series. I think that they're Waterstones. I don't remember, but they're very, very pretty. Oh, it's an anniversary edition. I think it's an anniversary edition from Waterstones, but they're just, they're stunning. So those are my two newbies on the shelf. Love them. You've officially made it through my Cassandra Clare collection, so let's go on to the regular shelves.
Okay, starting off strong, this next set of shelves that you're going to see going down the line are either favorite authors that I have or just authors that I have a large collection of books for. This first shelf is definitely a favorite author of mine. This is Bridget Kemmerer, and I randomly discovered A Curse So Dark and Lonely, and it kind of completely changed my life, and I absolutely love it. I love the series. And ever since then, I have been collecting Bridget Kemmerer books and reading all of them, and I absolutely love her. So over here I have the Curse of Dark and Lonely trilogy, and then I have Forging Silver into Stars, which is the sequel to this series. It's a new series after this series takes place. So good. Highly recommend. <laughs> and then over here I have these really, really pretty editions of A Curse of Dark and Lonely. I don't remember where these came from, but they make the castle, which is just stunning. And then they have really, really pretty art and a quote on the back. And I am so glad that I got them. They're just, they're so beautiful. And down here, I actually have some of the crests. I have the crest of Emberfall and the crest of Sil Shallow. These were something that you got from the publisher if you pre-ordered the books. One of them I picked out, I believe I picked out I want to say Sil Shallow because I love Sil Shallow. And then Emberfall was something I found somebody was selling on a resale site and I really wanted to have the set, so I purchased it. Over here, there is a really beautiful pin from Lit Joy Crate. It says, The Curse Torments Us All, and it is absolutely stunning. I just really, really love it. And then, moving down, we have this really cool map of Kingdom of Kandala, which I actually just got in a box from the publisher and I don't know what to do with it yet, so it's living on the shelf, but it's so beautiful. Behind here, I have editions of Defy the Night and Defend the Dawn, and those are right there. In my defense, I do wanna say, one of these, for each of these sets, I bought when they came out for release date, well, I pre-ordered them. Another edition of each of these, I had to repurchase when I met the author, because they make you repurchase them when you go to meet an author, which is understandable because you support the bookstore, but it is still a struggle. And then the third edition of each of these, the publisher then sent me a finished copy to send me the book promotion box. And I haven't yet, it's in my plans, but I am going to be giving away one edition of each of these on one of my channels. Haven't decided which one yet, but I will be doing that because there's no reason for me to have three copies of each. And then the map of Kin Kandala, as I said, and then here is this really cool, I really like this. It's something that you will learn about if you read the book for Defend the Dawn, so I won't spoil, but it is coffee rations, and it's just, it's adorable, it smells delicious, it makes me laugh, I love it. I have this really cool edition of Defy the Night. I do not remember who this is from. You're probably going to hear me say that a million times, but I'm pretty sure it's Beacon Book Box. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong, but I really, really love it. This one actually might be the one from Beacon Book Box, but this one is really great too. And then over to the right, I have the UK paperbacks and UK hardcovers of Defy the Night and Forging Silver. And then right below are the Fairy Loot exclusive set of the books, and these are probably my favorite books that I own. They're pretty far up there with my favorite books. A friend of mine from Instagram actually gave them to me. She gave me the set because she knows how much I love Bridget, which I'm so grateful for because, as I said, they're, they're probably my favorite set of books. And then this was something that the publisher recently gifted me in the box I was talking about. It says Brood for Brooding, and it's <laughs> so funny to me. I love it. I'm in love with the shelf. I'm kind of nervous because I don't really have much room to grow, so we're gonna figure that out when it happens. We're gonna cross that bridge when we get to it. But as for now, let's move on to the next shelf. This is my next shelf in favorite authors, essentially, and the majority of this shelf is V.E. Schwab, as you can see. I am a huge, 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 huge fan of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I am now trying to collect every edition of it that I possibly can. So, we'll see how that goes. I believe this was the Owl Crate Exclusive Edition, the Book of the Month Edition, the Regular Edition, the Target Edition, and the Barnes & Noble Edition. These might be flipped, but I think this is Target and this is Barnes & Noble. This up here is a little thing that you can actually use to keep your book page open. It's really cute and it says, Il était une fois, which means once upon a time. 
and it was Addy LaRue Inspire. This too came from a subscription box and I'm not sure which one. This is the Perpetual Calendar and it is inspired by Addy LaRue. Underneath, behind it, I won't be able to show you the whole thing, but there is a quote as well as the Addy LaRue Constellation. I have kept it on June 1st. Everybody keeps asking me why it's still on June 1st because it's obviously not June 1st, it's November, but June 1st is my birthday. So instead of me remembering to change it every day, I decided, you know what, I'll just leave it on my birthday. <laughs> and then over here, this came in a subscription box as well. This makes me laugh. It is property of Night Spire. So if you have read the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy, you'll know what that means. And it's a toothbrush. I'm never gonna use it because I just won't, but it makes me laugh because, you know, if you were a stowaway on the ship or, you know, whatever, it'd be pretty useful. I have this really stunning edition of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue up here. It is one of my favorites and once again, I don't remember where it came from, but <laughs> the pages are beautiful, the end pages are beautiful, the underneath is gorgeous. There is artwork inside, and I believe it's fan artwork. It's absolutely stunning. I love, love, love this edition. Directly down below, I have the Barnes & Noble exclusive editions of the Darker Shade of Magic set, as well as the other exclusive editions. I don't have the regular set, and the regular set, the only difference is it's just all the beige color. So I don't really know what makes these all different. I think they're all the same, but I love them. I'm not gonna pull it out, but my Darker Shade of Magic trilogy is extremely annotated. There are so many sticky tabs in these books. I loved them and devoured them. Over here, this is a bookmark that came in the Fairy Loot October box, actually. I just got it. It's the Sell Your Soul box, and something about this art just really gives me Addie LaRue vibes. So, I don't know if that's exactly what this is for or if it's in general kind of just a sell your soul theme, but I stuck it over here with my Addy books, but there's no room next to Addy, so it's living in front of Darker Shade. Over here, this is so cool. This is a replica. I forget which subscription box does these. I'm telling you, somebody keep track of how many times I've said that. But this is Lila Bard's knife, and it is supposed to be a letter opener, but I, I love it, it's adorable. And it goes really well, obviously, with the color scheme. Over here, I have an Owl Crate Literary Luggage Tag Collection. This is specifically a luggage tag for Gallant. I just love the way it looks over here. I don't have a copy of Gallant, but I have read it. I read it from my library, and yeah, so I just naturally had to put the luggage tag over here with the rest of the V.E. Schwab shelf. This is something I purchased from a secondhand seller. It is a deck of cards inspired by the Darker Shade trilogy, and it is absolutely incredible. It is so nice. The artwork inside is just beautiful. The cards have gilded edges, so they're, they're shiny and gold and take away my attention, but I am just in love. It's a standard deck of cards, but I believe it's the, yeah, the king, the queen, and the jack all have special artwork on them. I had to have these when I saw them. Again, I found it on a secondhand site, but it really wasn't that expensive. I think somebody was selling it for $15 and, you know, I love this series so much, so why not? And then over here I have a started collection of V.E. Schwab's other works. I'm missing Vicious, but I do have Vengeful, and Vengeful was something I found at a secondhand store, and it's actually signed, which was pretty cool. I have Our Savage Song and Our Dark Duet. Still haven't read those yet, but they're high on my list. I have Bridge of Souls, and I've actually read this entire series, the City of Ghosts series, but I don't have the books in hardcover yet. Uh, it was something I loaned from the library. I believe I had the Ark of City of Ghosts, and then I loaned the rest from the library. I never finished the set, but it's something that I will purchase one day when I <laughs> remember to and have the funds for it. And then, over here you can kind of see it transitions into Lee Bardugo, and that's because Lee Bardugo just needed more space. So I have the original editions of the Shadow and Bone series in hardcover, as well as the new editions, the really pretty gold and teal and red edition. And then my most recent edition to the shelf is Demon in the Wood, which is the graphic novel that follows the Darkling. That is something that I pre-ordered, and it might 
I believe it's a special edition. Yes, this is a special edition. I do not remember which edition. Again, somebody count how many times I'm going to say that. It could be water stones. Who knows? But they've got the sprayed edges. It's absolutely stunning. I don't think this is signed. No, it's not signed. But it is absolutely to die for. It's gorgeous. And I cannot wait to read it because I adore the Darkling. The last piece of the shelf is this really pretty art print that I have of Alina and the Darkling. And it's just beautiful and wonderful and I really love it. It looks really good with all of the books. So yeah, that's it for this shelf. Let's move on to the next one. All right, here is my next shelf, and this is a continuation of my Lee Bardugo shelf from the left. This is a lot of my hardcovers for Lee Bardugo, and I was trying to come up with a creative way to display them. A lot of them don't really go well together, in my opinion, so I was trying to figure out a way to make them all tie together. I have Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I have King of Scars twice, because one of these editions is the exclusive Barnes & Noble edition, and it's got all this bonus content. But the weird thing about it is, is you can see it here, this book is a half, a, like a half an inch taller than Crooked Kingdom, but this one is a half an inch shorter than Crooked Kingdom, so I have no idea how to display them and this is how my brain decided worked best, because it does kind of bug me that their heights are different, I don't understand it. And then behind here I have Language of Thorns, I have Shadow and Bone in a Collector's Edition, and then Lives of Saints. I absolutely loved Lives of Saints, and I loved the Language of Thorns. Amazing. If you haven't read them, I highly recommend picking them up. And then I put Rule of Wolves at the bottom because it just all kind of fit together when I was piecing it in like a puzzle. And here I have this really, really cool Grisha verse mug. This was something that was sent to me by the publisher. I ended up being lucky enough to receive this really cool suitcase as promotion for the TV show, and it had everything you needed to be able to enter the world of the Grisha verse. One of the items was this mug. There was also waffles, of course, because Nina, it was great. And then there was also a passport in there so that when you enter the Grisha verse, you have your passport. I actually have two different passports. One of these passports was from that suitcase, and I'm pretty sure it was the red one. And then the other one was something that you got while you were at a book convention. It might be reversed. No, yeah, this was the suitcase, and this was the book convention. And essentially, when you went into the book convention, you could get a stamp for different things you could do at the book convention. But I love these. It makes me smile when I see it. I put it here so that it looks like... You got your passport ready to go so that when you go and take your adventure with the books, you've you've got your ticket in. And I just really love the way this shelf looked. I think that Lee Bardugo is one of my favorite authors, so having her have a statement shelf like this just really makes me happy. That is it for this shelf. On to the next one. This is the last shelf of either authors I love or authors I have a lot of books for. Everything from here on out is going to be genre-based. This is my Sarah J Mass collection, and this is going to be another one of those collections that eventually I'm going to have to figure out what to do because I'm going to just have too many books. I am currently working my way through the series. I have now gotten through Assassin's Blade all the way through Era of Fire. I need to start Queen of Shadows sometime soon, and now that I'm home from my trip, I probably will. I am eager to finish the series and see what my thoughts are. People have been begging me to read it for years, and I just haven't, so sorry about that. This is a collector's edition of Throne of Glass. My best friend Zach just gave it to me when he came over. He had an extra copy and he was kind enough to give it to me and it's just so pretty. It matches my collector's edition of Court of Thorns and Roses. This is an art print that I got from, again, who knows where. <laughs> Not even gonna attempt to remember. But it's an infamous quote from Throne of Glass. It says, you could rattle the stars, she whispered. You could do anything if only you dared. And deep down, you know it too. That's what scares you most. Love that, love the, the colors, love the way it looks. It's just beautiful, I always have it up for display. I wonder, nope, sometimes they say on the back who, where it came from. This is a literary luggage tag that I got from Owl Crate and the place on it of destination is Terrison. And it's just so pretty, I really like it. It's got the stag on it. This is actually a Funko Pop of Yelena from Marvel. If you know, you know Marvel at all, this is Yelena from Black Widow essentially and I didn't know where to put her, so I actually put her over here because, you know, Yelena's also an assassin and she's blonde, and I was like, okay, Selena, 
perfect. And yeah, so then over here I have the collector's edition of Court of Thorns and Roses. This is a bookmark that actually came in a random box and it's it's a metal bookmark that's actually a rose and I didn't know what to do with it so I was like okay a court of thorns and roses perfect <laughs> over here I have the regular editions of a court of thorns and roses a court of mist and fury and a court of wings and ruin most of these books are actually signed by Sarah I met her at kind of the opportune time where she was still doing signings before she got too big to do them and at the time, Sarah lived about an hour away from me, so most of these are actually signed. I have A Court of Frost and Starlight, A Court of Silver Flames, which is, I think now, my favorite Sarah J Mass book. It is covered in sticky tabs. And then I have Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood, and House of Sky and Breath. I have only read the first one, haven't read the second one. Don't come for me. Sorry about it. And then I have this really cool paperback edition of A Court of Silver Flames. This is another thing that my best friend Zach got me. He knows how much I loved Silver Flames, so he gave me the paperback edition as well. And then I have this really, really beautiful mug, which is Feyre, and I adore it. It's so stunning, and it's such a high-quality mug. Do not know where it's from. Could not tell you. But it lives over here, and I'm obsessed with it, so... That is my Sarah J Mass shelf. Well, let's move on to the next set. All right, and we're starting now from the very left, third shelf down. This is the very beginning of my organization that is completely genre-based. This is the start of my royalty books. I was trying to organize by any sort of method I possibly could that made it simplest, and I decided to start with royalty. So essentially you're going to see royalty going all the way across this set of shelves and I've basically just organized them by trying to keep series together where I can and also whatever looks aesthetically pleasing. I am still very much an aesthetics person so I very much try to organize by colors that go well together or whatever I think looks pretty. So over here have quite a few different books. I have not read the Three Dark Crown series yet. It's high on my list. I have read the Four Dead Queens uh, standalone, and this I believe is the Owl Crate exclusive. It was not my favorite, but it's so pretty that I just can't part with it. I have the And I Darken trilogy. This was such a perfect opportunity for me to display my Game of Thrones book. Uh, this Game of Thrones book I actually found at a used bookstore. I think it was for four dollars and it makes me laugh because every single page in this book is a character death in the entire series. And then at the very end it says all men must die. So spoilers, do not read this if you haven't seen the show. Here I have read The Dark Tide and I will tell you The Dark Tide is absolutely one of my favorite books. It is phenomenal if you haven't read it. Highly, highly recommend. I also recommend Stepsister. That was another really good one. And then I have the Cinder series over here. I have not read the Cinder series. I remember when I was in early YA days and those books were still coming out and I don't know, it was never something that caught my eye, but so many people have recommended it to me and I found the entire set at a used bookstore and they were very cheap. I think I got the entire set for under $20 and I was like, why not? What a what a great way to get the series and, you know, eventually I should read it. So that is there for when I do. And then over here on the top right, I do have this really, really beautiful crown. This is something that came in a beacon book box and I just love the way it looks on a shelf. It is so pretty and so flamboyant for no reason, which is amazing. This edition of Cinderella is Dead is absolutely stunning. It is a regular edition, but my friend Alex, who does Sprayed Edges, actually did this book, and it is just, oh my god, so stunning. And I am just in love with it and obsessed with it, and I believe she, yes, she also painted a shoe on the bottom, and it is, it's, it's gorgeous. I stare at this book often, but I love that she captured the, the details from the cover, and it looks so pretty, especially next to the purples and cinder, so... This is where she lives. And the final thing on the shelf is this mug. It says, I want adventure in the Great White somewhere. It is obviously from Beauty and the Beast. The other side is a stack of books. And this is something that I actually got from Disney World, I believe. And I just love it. It's so pretty. And here's where it lives. So on to the next set of shelves. All right, moving right along. This is my next shelf. It is also part of my royalty shelf. 
I know I say it a lot, but this is absolutely one of my favorite shelves because I am in love with how I was able to tie all of these different colors together. And I think the color scheme of the shelf is just stunning. So over here, to start with, I have a pretty large collection of Holly Black. These are the regular editions. Then I have the Barnes & Noble exclusive editions. I want to say these are very loot, but I could be wrong. I don't remember, to be honest. <laughs> but I absolutely love these editions as well. The Book of the Night. This is an exclusive edition that I just got. It is so beautiful. I love the black sprayed edge, and it's got a beautiful dust jacket on the inside. And tell me that's not just stunning. Right down here is another little trinket I believe came from a fairy loot. It is Prince Cardin, and I just love, love, love the way this looks. Moving right along, we have another edition of Book of the Night by Holly Black. I do not remember which edition that is. Again, I'm so sorry. I have this really cool Cruel Prince pin that I love. Again, you can see that I really like to put my pins at the top of the book spines. I really do think it's a cool way to display them. Here I have a candle that says smells like Oscar Isaac with a little Poe Dameron. This is just completely random. I just think that the color schemes of the candles went really well over here. This one says smells like Pedro Pascal and it has little baby Grogu and the Mandalorian. So again, color scheme. I just put them where they seem to, to look nice. And then over here, some more royalty books. This one is absolutely stunning. I'm obsessed with this book right here. Like, it's just such a gorgeous edition. This one up here, my best friend wrote, Zachary James. This is Iridescent Fury. Highly recommend that one as well. Great if you love royalty. This right here is actually an art print of one of the characters from Iridescent Fury, and it's so pretty, and the purples go so well, especially with the King of Elfheim over there in the purple edition. So yeah, this is probably one of my favorite shelves. Highly recommend if you haven't, this is backwards. Please ignore me. I should probably fix it. I'm... I'll fix it. Now that my bobbleheads are nodding in approval that I fixed the books, highly recommend Reign of Shadows and Rise of Fire by Sophie Jordan. So, so good. High on my TBR is The Midnight Girls by Alicia Jasinska. She also wrote the other book I recommended, The Dark Tide, which I loved, so I'm eager to get to this book. But there's just so many stunning editions. All three of these are just to die for in terms of how beautiful they are. But yeah, that is basically it for this shelf. Let's move on to the next one. Next up on my royalty shelf, I have one of my all-time favorite trilogies. This is something I always, always recommend to everybody that I possibly can. It is the Kiss of Deception trilogy by Mary E. Pearson. I am obsessed with this trilogy. If I could read it over and over and over again, I would. I, I can, but it would definitely keep me from reading other books, but honestly that might be worth it. I am obsessed with this trilogy. If you like royalty, highly, highly recommend. Even if you don't, please give it a go and tell me what you think because it's amazing. I have Vow of Thieves down here. There's also Dance of Thieves, which I do not own, but I have read. I just haven't gotten a copy yet but this is also a sequel series to this series. Here I have a couple of random books, The Prison Healer, The Gilded Cage. I have not read either of those. And then I also have the Graceling series by Kristen Kishore. I've not read these either. Didn't really know what to do with the organization on this shelf because you've got these greens and blues, which would go with the shelf over here, but you've also got this really bright red book and I didn't really know how to tie it all together, so it was perfect to have Graceling there. This is one of my favorite knickknacks. This is actually a mug from Disney World. It is a book stack with a rose and a ribbon bookmark. You've got some book spines. This one says looking for adventure. And then you've got a ribbon with Belle's signature on it. It is a Beauty and the Beast mug that my mom got me when we were in Disney together. And typically I put bookmarks in it. It just doesn't have anything at the moment, but I really love it, and I think it's so pretty on the shelf, so yeah, that's it for this one. Let's move on to our last royalty shelf. This is my last royalty shelf. This is just another combination of colors I thought looked really good together. There's no other rhyme or reason to my organization aside from the fact that the genre is there and the series I try and keep together, but this is a lot of reds, whites, blues, yellowy golds, and 
it's just a bunch of really great books. Highly recommend The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller if you haven't read that. Phenomenal. I'm really excited to eventually get to the Furyborn series by Claire Legrand. I loved her book Saw Kill Girls, so I'm really eager to get to this one. Other than that, I haven't read much on this shelf. This is a shelf of a lot of books I really, really want to get to. I have a candle over here that's kind of random, but it's called Shadow of Light, and I thought it went with the color scheme. It smells really good. I have this really cool pin from Crown of Oblivion by Julie Eshbaugh, and it says, I will change my tomorrow with what I do today. And it's got a little crown on it, so it works perfectly on the royalty shelf. That's also a really good book. Highly recommend that one. Over here, I put my queen, Sansa Stark because she's a queen and she goes with the color scheme of the shelf. And then over in the corner there it says Born to Rule. It's actually a mirror that folds in on itself. I got it in a subscription box and I absolutely love it. And yeah, that is it for my royalty books. Let's move down and across to the next set of books. All right, and now we're moving on to the fourth shelf down all the way to the left. This is a new genre. This is actually kind of a general fantasy genre and it goes all the way across to the other side just like the last set. I kind of tried to organize by general fantasy because a lot of these could fit under a different type of genre but in a way to make it easier for me to organize as I gain new books this was kind of just a catch-all general fantasy shelf so let's dive in. So again, as with all of my previous organization, I kind of just throw books together based on what I think looks nice. This is another one of those shelves that I'm really proud of with the color scheme. I think that it turned out very, very nicely. When I was staring at the books and they were all in a pile, I didn't think any of them went together and it was a lot of staring and sighing and then eventually I came up with this and I ultimately really really love this shelf. I know I've said it a few times but this is another one of my favorite shelves. I think it just turned out so nicely. On this shelf over here to the left I do have this really cool mug. This is a Mandalorian mug and it's a Mandalorian mug that is a Disney exclusive Starbucks mug and it's got all the characters on it and I think the color scheme went really really well with the books and I love it. So it looks really great. And then right here we have my Jon Snow Funko. I kind of figured he looked like he belonged in a fantasy novel, which he is from a fantasy novel, so that does check out. But I thought he looked pretty cool over here. In terms of this shelf, I will say my favorite series on this shelf is The Young Elites by Marie Lu, which is down here on the bottom. This is a series that I think is so highly underrated. A lot of people have read her Legend series, and honestly not a lot of people have even read that from when I talk to people, but the Young Elites trilogy is literally elite, as it says in the title. It is so good. I constantly look at it and want to reread it, but I'm like, no, Danielle, you have so much else to read, so haven't done that yet, but huge, huge fan of that. I've also read Bone Crier's Moon. I haven't read Bone Crier's Dawn, but I did semi like the first one. It didn't grip me too strongly, but it was decent enough that I think I will continue the series. I think there could be a third one, I'm not sure. The interesting part of organizing by color is always that the next book that comes out could throw off your color scheme, so we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But other than that, I have this really cool little coin down here. It says the Rose Society. It's from Fay Crate, and the Rose Society, as you can see, is one of the Young Elites books. And again, please read that if you haven't. The bookmark over to the right came in a subscription box. It says, from knowledge comes vengeance, and I thought it tied in well with the mug. I thought the, the beiges of those went pretty well together, and so here it lives on my shelf. So let's move on to the next shelf. This is another general fantasy shelf. It does feature some of my favorites. Over to the left, we have one of my favorite series, which is the Red Queen series by Victoria Aveyard. I was obsessed with these books when they came out. I remember reading the books and I remember throwing a couple of the books when the plot twists happened and I was just so fully invested and I read them at the right time and now they hold a special place on my shelf. I do have a couple of the collector's editions and then I also have a novella sitting up here as well. I believe one of my collector's editions, if not both, are signed by the author as well as the novella. I did recently meet Victoria Aveyard last year at Y'all Fest and she is absolutely wonderful, so yeah, I, I, I love the Red Queen series. 
I do have Round Breaker and Blade Breaker, which are also by Victoria Aveyard. They're her new books that she is putting out. I have not read them yet, but I am very excited to get to them. I do have another one of those coins I was talking about. This one is the House Color coin. It's from Fake Crate. It goes with Red Queen. And then I have this Red Queen pin that says Rise, Red is Dawn. Love it. Over here, I do have a couple favorites as well. One of my all-time favorites is That Dark Infinity by Kate Pentecost. This book, if you haven't read it, please look it up. Please do. It's phenomenal. The publisher did send me an ARC. I was very fortunate enough to receive an ARC, and as soon as I read the description on the back, I was like, oh, this is gonna be... <laughs> this is gonna be one of those books that I just can't put down. And I was correct. At this point in time, I don't believe it's going to continue into a series, so it's a pretty quick read and it's a standalone, which is nice. I also highly recommend the Black Wings Beating Trilogy by Alex London. I'm pretty sure it's going to stay a trilogy. I am missing the third book, but I've read the first two, and they're phenomenal. Highly recommend. And then also on this shelf, I have Little Kylo and Dark Ray. Dark Ray and Kylo I found at a secondhand bookstore, and they were used. And I just love Dark Grey. It's just such a vibe, and it goes really well with these shelves. And Kylo is pretty cool, because look what Kylo does. I, too, get upset when someone pokes my head. So I get it. <laughs> but it's just adorable. He really is a statement on this shelf. I absolutely adore him. So... With that being said, let's move on to the next shelf. All right, moving right along to the next shelf. This shelf is another one of those shelves where I had a whole bunch of different color schemes and I wasn't quite sure what to do with all of them, but I did my best. Starting with the left, I have the Caraval Trilogy by Stephanie Garber. I have read the first Caraval book. I have not continued the series, but I do have them all because I was fortunate enough to meet Stephanie at a signing she did with Bridget Kemmerer. So I just had her sign the other two for me, which was just lovely. I've also read the Ace of Shades book by Amanda Foody. I don't believe I finished the series. It was another one of those that I read and then waited too long to continue reading and now have forgotten everything. So eventually I will get to that series again. I will go back to it. Hasn't happened yet, but I do remember very fondly loving Ace of Shades. I was very impressed by it. And the Shadow of the Fox series is another one I'm excited to get to. I just haven't done it yet. The mug on the shelf is so cool. It's a fairy lit exclusive, and it's for Daughter of the Moon Goddess. It's absolutely stunning. I am really here for the color scheme. I'm really here for the art style. It's just so beautiful, and I think it goes perfectly on this shelf. All right, onward to the next shelf. This is the last shelf for my general fantasy series. This was an interesting shelf to put together because I had a lot of these very bright, bold colors and didn't really know what to do with them. And this was what I came up with to tie them together. There's lots of blues and purples and yellows and reds and oranges, and it was definitely a difficult shelf. I'm not super pleased with it, but for right now it works. On the shelf, I will say I love the Crown of Feathers series so, so much. I do have to finish Wings of Shadow. At the bottom, I do have, I believe, the Owl Crate Exclusive Editions. They are stunning, but I loved the first two, and I highly recommend it. I will get to the third one eventually, just not yet. This is actually a Fungo Pop of Belle from Once Upon a Time, but again, she just looks like a general fantasy character, and she... Looks like she fits in with her little dagger, so there she lives. I have this really cool exclusive Crown of Feathers pin from Owl Crate that I really love. It does definitely throw off the color scheme with the background of the pin. I could take it off of there, but I haven't yet. I guess it kind of matches over here, but it is what it is. <laughs> and then I also have this really cool, I want to say Illumicrate, yes. This is an Illumicrate mug that came in one of their boxes. It's just absolutely stunning. I think it goes so well with the different books on the shelf and the color scheme. And yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of this one. Other than that, I have not really read too many books on the shelf. I know I am eager to get to This Vicious Grace. I'm also eager to get to Sky Hunter by Marie Lu. I'm very eager to get to Lainey Taylor's Strange the Dreamer series, so that's kind of where I'm at with the shelf. I'm also very interested in The Valkyrie's Daughter. That sounds very good to me. But other than that, 
still have quite a bit to read on the shelf, which is always something to look forward to. And moving on to the next set of shelves. All right, now we are on the fifth shelf down all the way to the left, and we have officially started a new genre. This is the start of my dystopian books genre, and honestly, this shelf gave me a lot of grief. I did not know. <laughs> Again, the color schemes for dystopian are so interesting. I did my best, but I really do like the way that this turned out. I have an interesting variety of books, but as you see through the shelves as we go through the genre, you'll kind of understand why I organized the way I did. I do have over here, these are some of my favorite books. These are the special editions of the Legend series, and it makes the Republic symbol, which is really cool. It's got the symbol on the spine. The front of it is beautiful. There's a quote on the back. I am in love with these. And again, if you have not read the Legend series, you're doing yourself a disservice. These books are phenomenal. I am in love with them, but look how cool is it with the little symbol. And then to tie in all of the colors, the interesting oranges and reds and browns, I did face out my most recent book, which is The Maze Cutter by James Dashner. This is a book that was sent to me. It's signed. It's just cool to, to be able to have a signed copy from an author of a series of books that I really loved. It did come with these matches, which is interesting. I don't really know if I want them or what I'm going to do with them, but for now they live on my shelf. It also came with Crank Palace novella, a uh, little card. It's got an audiobook on the back, but I liked the card, so I decided to keep it. One of my most recent additions to the shelf is the Mage Runner movie tie-in. It is absolutely stunning and cool, and I actually got it from a secondhand bookstore. You can see the little tag on the back of it, but it's just so cool. It's got the maze. There's the little, I paid $6 for it. It says everything is going to change, and it says it has full color movie photos inside. I think it still does. It does. Pretty cool. But yeah, it was only six bucks. There's, there's an old sticker on it that I'm gonna have to try and get off later, but for now, it'll do. And then I have the rest of the Maze Runner set. I have, these are the ones that I remember coming out from Barnes & Noble, and then these down here are like glossy and they have a different font, and I don't know where they came from or when they started coming out, but I did end up getting these from a friend of mine from Instagram, her name is Alex, she sent these to me. I love the Mage Runner books, and I didn't know there were other editions, and I knew I had to have them. I think the kill order, though, I did find at a secondhand bookstore, and I really, really like the way that this one looks. I'm not going to pull it out, but I do really like the way it looks aesthetically. And then directly above that is one of my now favorite series. It's the Chaos Walking trilogy, and it is by Patrick Ness. The first one is The Knife of Never Letting Go. It did have a movie that came out recently with Daisy Ridley and Tom Holland. I will say that the movie is garbage because <laughs> I love the actors. I loved the casting for it, but they did try to fit all three books into a single movie and didn't even brush on any of the important parts. I was very disappointed in the movie, to be honest. I do love this cover, though. The cover is stunning, and I did a partnership with Lionsgate promoting it. They sent me this cover, and I'm gonna keep it forever because I love Daisy and I love Tom, and though the movie was disappointing, they still did a great job. And then most recently acquired is this copy of Monsters of Men. It is also part of the Chaos Walking trilogy. It is the third book, and I did not know they came in hardcover. I stumbled upon this on a random second in Charles when we were coming home from South Carolina from Y'all Fest. It was in Virginia, chilling on the shelf. How much did I pay for this? $7.95, and I love this. I love that you can see the noise in the background. If you've read the book, you understand what that is. I love the color. Orange is my favorite color. And now it's going to be fun because I'm going to just be looking out for the other ones and see if I can complete the set, but it's it's really cool. I'm, I'm so glad that I found it. And I just haven't given it a home yet, so it's kind of sitting there until I rearrange and figure out how I want to put it in here. So that is that. Let's move on to the next shelf. All right, moving one shelf to the right. This is the next shelf on my dystopian shelf. I do actually love the way that this turned out. It did give me a headache when I was first arranging it because, again, the random colors, I did not know how to organize it. 
but I think I did okay. Over here we have Divergent, clearly. These are the collector's hardcover editions. They're shiny and pretty and I love them. I have the paperbacks that just came out and the paperbacks are actually stunning. I don't know if you've seen them all spread out the way that they're supposed to be, but I will show you here. It actually makes one giant picture, which is so cool. I think, yes, it makes one picture sideways. I wasn't sure if I had to do it in a square. I could be wrong. I think it's that way. Let me look. That's the picture. <laughs> My brain had to piece everything together to see if that looked right. But it's so cool because it does make one giant picture. It's absolutely stunning. The publisher sent it to me for a promotion. It's the 10th anniversary edition, which is crazy to me. I cannot believe it's been 10 years since it's been out. But they're stunning. They're beautiful. I think I'm going to reread these eventually and annotate them. I just think these editions were absolutely phenomenal. Whoever came up with them did an amazing job. And then right down here, I do have this really cool little pencil tin. It says, fear doesn't shut you down, it wakes you up. I believe it came in a beacon book box and I just thought it was cute and I thought I had to have it. It does reflect pretty brightly in the sun, so I didn't think about that when I got it, but alas, I like the quote. I think it looks pretty cute here. And then moving over to the right, I have the Scythe series by Neil Schusterman. His next book, Gleanings, just came out, so who knows how I'm going to fit it on here. Number one, it's purple, <laughs> but number two, where? But I'll figure that out when I get to it. I have this really cool Scythe. It came in a uh, fairy loot or a lumicrate. It came in one of the boxes. It is absolutely not for the Scythe series. It's for a different series altogether, but because you have the Scythe book. I thought it was perfect. I thought it fit. It's actually a bottle opener. You can kind of tell, but right now it just makes really pretty bookshelf decoration. And then sliding over to the right, I do have my Hunger Games collection. I have the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes in the Waterstones edition, and then I have it in the regular edition. I believe the one facing out is a Target exclusive edition. My brother's fiance got it for me as a gift, and it means so much to me. She knows how much I love the Hunger Games and books in general, and it was so, so sweet that she got it for me. And then I have the original trilogy I bought, along with my Mockingjay pin that I wore to every movie premiere since I had it, and it's just so special to me, and it looks so good with the bookshelves. The one at the very bottom was a gift from a friend. It was something he put together himself. It's not something that is for sale. It's very stunning, but the only way that we ever got one was because it was something he made, so those are not something available to the public, but it is still really special to me and it looks so good on the shelf and right beneath that is a coaster it says may the odds be ever in your favor the hunger games and i believe that this is also something that was in a beacon book box but i love it i actually have one for display it came in a set of four and then i actually use the other ones around this room because they're they're really high quality great coasters yeah, that is it for this shelf. Let's move on to the next one. My next shelf is another one of the half-size bookcase shelves, and I've been using these for kind of my statement books. This was a great spot for these. I didn't know exactly where I wanted them at first, but I definitely wanted specifically these editions to have their spotlight. But this is, as you can tell, my Shatter Me set by Ted Amafi. This is the original cover the books came in. It's it's in there pretty tight, but I'll pull it out. It's it's interesting. It is it's an interesting one. I think that it definitely screams early YA, but I found it at a secondhand bookstore for a few dollars and I definitely wanted it for my collection because it is a cool little piece of history in my opinion. And then I have the original set. I have two copies of Restore Me because I did end up winning a giveaway for one on, I believe, Instagram, but it might have been Twitter. Somebody went to one of her signings and they gave away an additional copy of Restore Me. And I haven't gotten rid of the other one yet because the signed copy that I won is a regular edition. And the other copy that I just owned before I won the copy is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition and it does come with a lot of bonus content so I haven't been able to get rid of one because I don't want to miss out on the bonus content but I don't want to lose the signature so I just have two. And then I have a couple of the novellas in paperback up here. I have Find Me and Unite Me. I don't have the other ones yet. I think that there are more paperback novellas now but 
I do love them and now with the way that I've been organizing my shelves by doing these stacks I can display them on my shelf whereas before I would only put them on a cart so love that I have this really cool coaster I don't want to use it because it doesn't seem like something that will hold up very well if it gets wet but it does say I spent my life folded between the pages of books I do not know where this came from but I do love it and the color scheme goes perfectly with the shelves and then my favorite these books they are in there very securely and they are out of order of course <laughs> but look how stunning they're so shiny you can see my ring light that's how shiny they are they're absolutely gorgeous and they're definitely out of order and then there's a quote on the back of each one i absolutely love these editions i will fix this the order of these Ugh, I should do it right now. I want to say my favorite part of bookshelf tours, to be honest, is finding all of the books that are out of order and outing myself and all of you get to see it and see how many of my books are just out of order all the time. It's a lot of fun for me. I'm going to put this back and we are going to move on to the next shelf. All right, this is the final set of dystopian books on my shelf. This is another interesting section where I wasn't entirely sure how the colors were going to go together, but again, I think I did okay. But we'll we'll see. I'll, I'll leave you to be the judge of that. Starting over here to the left, I do have this really special mug. It's special to me. It's the They Read What podcast, and it was a podcast that my best friend and I started and then we never finished, but it's still special to me because it's something we created together. It is stuffed chock full of bookmarks. So I have bookmarks for days, quite literally. This Addie LaRue one is stunning. It says, don't forget. It's got the constellation. I've got some really, really amazing bookmarks. Just look at, look, look how stunning some of these are. I believe this was a Y'all Fest bookmark. Yes, this was the Y'all Fest logo the year we went. Right behind here, I do have a couple of different series that I really, really love. The Fifth Wave series is one of my favorites. A lot of people have either read the first one and given up or never read any of them. And I will tell you, the best book in the series is The Infinite Sea. It's the second one. It is absolutely to die for. It is so good. And then this is the anniversary edition that I got from Barnes & Noble. I had to get it because I'm a big fan of the books. And this is the movie tie-in edition. And because I like the series so much, had to get it. I know a lot of people don't like movie tie-in editions, but I actually am a sucker for them, to be honest. I really love a good movie tie-in. I'm never going to buy the movie cover over the standard edition, but if I'm going to collect a book series, I actually don't mind them. I think this is a really cool cover, to be honest. And I love how it wraps all the way to the back. So, there's the movie Time Edition. I believe I actually found that at a secondhand store as well. A lot of my books come from secondhand stores, as you can tell. Then I have the Ember and the Ashes series. These are the two original covers that came out in the series, and these are the two newer ones. I believe now you can buy the two first books in the series to match the two latest ones. I just haven't done it yet. I do prefer for the aesthetic of these two covers, but I will say I think that the better covers are the two that are the later covers because it's a series full of important representation and these covers do not showcase that representation. So these covers are phenomenal. Then over here I have the Darkest Minds trilogy. One of my friends actually pointed out to me I had no idea that it's actually a poem. The, the titles of the books, it never occurred to me because I was trying to figure out what order to put them in. And my best friend was like, it, it's a poem. Through the dark, the darkest minds never fade in the afterlight. And I was like, oh my god, that is so cool. I'm pretty sure that this is a novella, but I haven't read them. They're high on my list. This is the series I was telling you guys about earlier, the orange editions that I had back there. But please read this. If you have not read the Legend series, please read it. It's so good. It's so good. I have not read the new one that came out because I want to reread these first, so sorry about it, but I am excited. These books were amazing when I was younger. I'm sure those will be just as amazing now, but they were definitely amazing when I was younger. And then over here, I don't really know what this edition is. I found it randomly again at a secondhand store. It's definitely different. It's flat and glossy where these are matte covers behind and I don't know why it's different. I don't know what makes it different, but maybe it's an anniversary edition, but I do 
collect books, so I had to get it, and I think the graphic on this is really cool, so. Yeah, this was another secondhand purchase. Over here, down here, actually, highly recommend these books, Dark Inside and Rage Within by Jen Roberts. Phenomenal. If you are ever in the mood for a good zombie book, like a dystopian zombie book, Ooh, it's dark, it's gory, it's so good. Highly, highly recommend. I have read Dread Nation, but I have not read Deathless Divide. I am thinking there might be a third one. I could be wrong, it could be a duology, but I definitely want to continue with the series. From what I remember, I really enjoyed it. And the last thing on the shelf is the Imposters series. I have book one through book four. I don't know if there's more there could be. I haven't read it. It's something that a friend of mine has been begging me to read for a while, which is a common theme amongst all of these books, apparently, but I will eventually get to them. There's just so many books in the queue, and I'm sure all of you understand that. And the very last thing on the shelf is this really, really cool four-leaf clover. It is huge. It is, it's so massive and heavy and sturdy. And it's just a sentimental piece. I thought the gold went really well with all the golds over here. Honestly, you would need good luck if you are going to survive a dystopian, so I think that's funny as well. But this is actually something that hung above my grandma's door. She passed away about seven years ago, and this was something as a kid I always looked at. I thought it was the coolest thing ever, and she left it to me when she passed. I don't know. I just think it's really cool, and it's nice to have a little piece of her. And yeah, that's the four-leaf clover. And that is the rest of the shelf, so let's move on to the last row of shelves. We are now finally on the very bottom row of my shelves all the way to the left. This is exclusively my C slash pirate books. Really love the way this turned out. I didn't know where else to put these books. They could have been general fantasy, but I really liked the idea of keeping all of my C books together because Clearly I like them. There's quite a few. I have All the Stars and Teeth, and I have a special edition of All the Stars and Teeth. I believe one of them is the Owl Crate special edition. I think, yeah, they're in there. They are in there so tight. See how tight they're in there? They are not coming out. But one of them is the special edition. <laughs> um, All the Stars and Teeth was okay for me. I didn't love it, but it was decent. I did read Crown of Coral and Pearl by Mara Rutherford. I did like that. I read Kingdom of Sea and Stone. I did like that. I've read The Passenger Duology by Alexandra Bracken. It was not my favorite. I was really bummed about it. I thought it was going to be something I'd really love between sea books and time travel, but it didn't do it for me. I might have read it at the wrong time, but either way, I have read <laughs> that duology. I'm really, really interested in getting into Crossbones by Kimberly Vale. I haven't done it yet. Scavenge the Stars was phenomenal. Ravage the Dark was okay. It's the follow-up to that. I do have a special edition of Scavenge the Stars. I have Fable and Namesake. Those, of course, are in the wrong order, <laughs> but these books are not getting shifted right this second because they are in there very securely. But Fable is first and then Namesake is second. I really did like Fable. I have not read Namesake yet. Obviously, we've got to have a Pirates of the Caribbean Funko, so I have Jack Sparrow and I have Will Turner. This is a literary luggage collection as well, and this is for the Port of Saros which is for Fable, so it goes right there. I have The Brightest Star in the North, which is a Pirates of the Caribbean novelization. Here I have To Kill a Kingdom, which is actually, To Kill a Kingdom is tucked away up there. You can kind of see it. The art print goes with To Kill a Kingdom. I really want to say I liked that book. It wasn't my favorite. It wasn't my cup of tea, which makes me sad because I really do love the art print. Obviously going to keep the art print, but I did read To Kill a Kingdom. And then back here, we have some of these books. These are, one of these is a special edition. Couldn't tell you which right now because I can't see it. And then same thing with uh, The Beholder and then The Boundless. The Beholder and The Boundless go together by Anna Bright. One of them is a special edition. I think it's this one. And then these books go together. And then directly behind Will Turner, I have another novelization of Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. And I have Coral, Daughter of the Pirate King, Daughter of the Siren Queen. Daughter of the Pirate King is phenomenal. Loved it. It's pitched as a female Jack Sparrow, which is amazing. Daughter of the Siren Queen was pretty good, too. I liked Daughter of the Pirate King a little bit more. And then I have Sea Witch and Sea Witch Rising. I also loved those. Those are by Sarah Hennig. Very, very good. Highly recommend. And that is it for my pirate shelf, so let's move on to the next one. 
Alright, this is the next shelf over to the right. This is a brand new genre. This is essentially the start of my retellings. As you can see, I had quite a few different colors to work with here. I think I did okay. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't read a single book on this shelf, but I'm eager to. I did start the Hazelwood. I didn't get very far. I tried to get through it. I did not get very far. I've read the other book that Rosamond Hodge wrote, which I believe is called Cruel Beauty, and honestly, I wonder where it went because it would fit right down here. That's interesting. I do own it. So if I find it, maybe it'll be put over here and it would match the shelf. It's red. So that's interesting. Um, I wanted to read Heartless by Marissa Meyer when I first got it, but I never did because I actually thought that you had had to read the rest of her series first and that's not the case, so that's now high on my list. I do believe what I would start with out of all of these books, though, is These Violent Delights and Our Violent Ends, as well as Folly Fortune. I have had the pleasure of meeting Chloe Gong recently, and just hearing her talk about her books really makes me want to dive in, so I think that I would probably start with those, or as I said, Darling Girl, just because it caught my attention when I ordered it from Book of the Month. I have this really cool tin. I believe it came in a fairy loot. It says, death was her poison and she wanted to consume more. And the quote was by Adeline Grace. And I just thought the color scheme went really well with this shelf. This is a quote from Belladonna. And then I have this really pretty bookmark that said, one must not fear fire to wield it. And that is a quote from June C.L. Tan. And then, yeah, I just have some really cool special editions. This green edition of These Violent Delights, I believe, is the Owl Crate exclusive edition. I'm missing the Owl Crate exclusive edition of Our Violent Ends, but maybe one day I'll stumble upon it. And then I do have some of the special editions of Foul Lady Fortune, and they are stunning. I believe two of them came from Barnes & Noble, and then one of them is just a special edition, but couldn't tell you what for. <laughs> the theme of the day. And that is it for this shelf, so let's move on to our next one. Alright, this is a continuation of my retellings. This is a shelf almost exclusively for Stephanie Garber. Not quite, but there are some gorgeous, gorgeous additions here. I have Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After. I have them in the original editions as well as the Barnes & Noble exclusive editions. Again, I was fortunate enough to meet Stephanie Garber recently, so I had them signed. And I just think that they flow so beautifully on the shelf, especially coming from over here with Chloe Gong's pink books. They just flow very well together. And then on the bottom right is just a jar full of flower petals. It came in a another subscription box and I wasn't quite sure what to do with it, but the color scheme works perfectly over here. The one that I'm most excited to get to on the shelf is actually the Stardust Thief. I do not remember what edition that is. I could not tell you, but it's beautiful and the edges are purple, so... There's that. But this is just another one of those shelves that I think is really, really pretty. I'm very happy that all the books go together so well. And that is it for this shelf. Let's move on to our very last shelf on this bookcase. All right, it is time for our official last shelf. This shelf, I do not love the way it looks at all. Please don't judge me for it. <laughs> I did my best with what I had. So starting over here, from here over, these are retellings. Oh, there's Cruel Beauty. Love that for me. I could put that over there. I don't know why I didn't, but there must have been a reason. This one I have read. I did really actually like this one. Very, very good. My favorite of all, though, Gilded by Marissa Meyer. I haven't read Curse yet. It just came out, and I'm dying to read it. It was, like, one of my favorite books of the year when Gilded came out, so I will read it eventually. It hasn't happened yet, and I have this Gilded pin down here. You can tell I really like it. And then over beyond Capturing the Devil, this is just here because I have to put it next to Hunting Prince Dracula. I didn't really know what to do with these. These are kind of just sporadic, random, I will figure out what to do with them eventually. And that is it for my main shelves. So we are actually going to go across the room to my newest shelves and I will show you the books over there.
we are officially on the other side of my bedroom and we are starting at the far wall over to the left hand side when you face all of the shelves. These are two of my all time favorite series. I clearly have collected multiple editions of each of them and because of this I've really had nowhere to put them. So for now they just live on the very very top of the shelf. That is all the way to the left the Vampire Academy series and the Bloodlines series that follows it. I have some of the hardcovers all the way to the left. I have the movie tie-in edition and I have paperback editions of both and then moving over to the right another big favorite series of mine the beautiful creatures series I actually read this really late my best friend crystal would not let me read the books before we watched the movie and I never do that but I loved the movie so much that I devoured the book series. I found the paperback editions of the book series in a box set at a secondhand bookstore and those I think were in a box set for $15 and they looked almost brand new and I read the entire series in a week, week and a half. I devoured it. Since then I have found the hardcover editions at that secondhand store so that I could collect them at a cheaper price. My best friend got me The Beautiful Creatures, the manga graphic novel, and I also found the movie tie-in edition at the same secondhand store. And I really love these books. I did not know where to put them, and there are, there are far too many to just store on a typical shelf, so I kind of just kept them together and said, hey, that makes sense to me. <laughs> So there they are, they crown the top of this entire bookshelf. We'll go down the entire bookshelf, shelf by shelf, we're going to go straight down all the way to the bottom, and basically you'll kind of see how all the genres on this shelf tie together. So let's move down one shelf to the next one. Alright, we are one shelf below the Vampire Academy and Beautiful Creature shelves. This shelf is urban fantasy. You can kind of tell by some of the books that are on here. The color scheme is very interesting. I really did not know what to do with it, but I did my best, as I mentioned on plenty of shelves. We have one of my favorite box signs over here. It's from Barnes & Noble. It says, go away, I'm reading. It makes me laugh every time I see it, so I always try and find a good shelf to display it. We have my Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. I've read all of the books in this series except for the latest release, which is The Desolation of Devil's Acre, but I love, 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 love that series. I also have this little coin-looking thing. It says, stay peculiar and it has the uh, bird on it. It was actually for a bracelet, but I did not like the way the bracelet looked. It was an interesting bracelet to wear, so I just took it off and I keep it next to the books. And then right next to that we have Infinity Sun and Infinity Reaper by Adam Silvera. I have read Infinity Sun, it's phenomenal. I have not read Infinity Reaper yet, but I recently met Adam Silvera at Y'all Fest this past week and he was so nice. He signed my editions and I'm very excited for the third one, so that one's probably going to be coming out next year. This is Ballad and Dagger by Danielle Jose Older, and I don't remember which subscription box it came in. It came with this art print. I want to say Owl Crate. I could be wrong. It's very beautiful, so I have it facing out because I really, really love the cover. I think it's stunning. And then next to that, I have The Stars Between Us and Legendborn, Legendborn by Tracy Dion. And right above that, I have Lainey Taylor's trilogy, Daughter of Smoke and Bone. This trilogy seems to haunt me because every time I have it on any sort of video or in any sort of picture, I always have it in the wrong order. So hopefully it's in the right order. Who knows? I have not read it yet. I'm pretty certain that's the right order but I guess we'll see. And then I have, oh, these are out of order. Love that for me. They're backwards. It's supposed to be Latent Wolf, Accidental Alpha, and Wolves of War. So I, I just, I love that for me. I will fix that. I'm going to fix it now. I can't look at it. Okay, that's better. I, I feel much better about that. <laughs> so yes, I have those. This is the start of my urban fantasy shelves. And then I have this really cool book light from Entangled Teen. It says Booked All Night. And essentially, I think it has batteries in it, but no. But essentially, you just stick it over whatever page you're reading, and it illuminates the page you're reading. So it's very cute. I love it, and I have it on the shelf, so it's handy if I need it. 
and let's move down a shelf. All right, moving down one shelf, we still have a continuation of my urban fantasy, also mixed with the next genre we're gonna get into because I didn't have enough room. But this is the start of my Rick Riordan shelf. I am a huge fan of Rick Riordan's writing. I always put this little box sign over here. It's another one of those box signs that I got from Barnes & Noble. It makes me laugh. It says, don't judge a book by its movie. I did not mind the Percy Jackson movies as much as some people. Some people hated the Percy Jackson movies. I'm not one of them. I thought that they were fine. I'm glad I got another chance at experiencing the world. I am very excited about the Disney Plus show that's coming out, but I still put that there because it makes me laugh. I also alternate it between the Percy Jackson shelf and the Chaos Walking shelf that I told you about because the Chaos Walking movie was terrible. But I digress. Here is the start of my Percy Jackson books. I have read the Percy Jackson series. I have read the Blood of Olympus series. Are these out of order too, Danielle? No, they say book one through five. Okay, perfect. Then over here, as you can kind of see, is the start of a little bit of a, a sci-fi shelf, as you will, hence some of my Star Wars knickknacks that I don't have space for. So we have Kylo and Rey, we have my boy Finn, and then we have this really large, ridiculous, oh, Kylo Ren statue that wanted to take a, a leap for it. Yes, Kylo in the corner is, he's one of my faves, so he just sits there and, and judges me for my massive pile of unread books. It's wonderful. We have the start of some sci-fi books right behind him. We have War Across Wild Card, the James Dashner books, The Eye of Mind, which I believe I've read the first two, question mark, I'd have to look. And then Heart of Iron, and the sci-fi shelves continue a shelf below, so let's go down and see those. All right, one shelf down, we are on to our next set of sci-fi books. This was another color scheme that was very interesting to work with. I also had quite a few overflow knickknacks that I didn't know what to do with, so... I did my best. I have read Proxy by Alex London, which I absolutely adored. I've read Dustborn by Aaron Bowman, which I absolutely loved. That gives me Mad Max Fury vibes. It's phenomenal. One of my favorite reads of whatever year I read it. I think it was last year. I've also read Aurora Rising. Still need to get to Aurora Burning. I will eventually. And then I know there's a third one out, which I don't have, and it's green, so that's gonna throw off the color scheme here. We'll figure it out when we get there. Over here, I have the Illuminate trilogy. I adored this trilogy. I did not think I was going to like it because if you don't know, it's told through emails, voice memos, phone calls, messages. It's, it's a very interesting way of telling a story, but it is absolutely phenomenal, and I actually read it while listening to the audiobook. Highly recommend very, very, very incredible series. I read War Girls. I really liked War Girls. I didn't get to finish the rest of the series. That's still on my list, but it is phenomenal. The cover for this is gorgeous. I really, really like it. It's just so pretty. I also bought this one used for $4.55. I believe I had an arc of the book when it came out, and I read the arc, and then I liked it so much when I found it at the secondhand store, I bought it for my collection. And because we have sci-fi, I do have some more sci-fi knickknacks. I have my lightsaber when I did my Disney college program. After having our onboarding at Disney, they let each of us pick out a lightsaber. I was one of the few people who took a red lightsaber. I don't know what that says about me, but pretty amazing. It's one of the ones where you hold it down and you flick it and it comes out. This is one of my all-time favorite mugs. It is a Stormtrooper mug with Kylo and my girl Phasma, and if you know anything about me, you know that I freaking love Phasma. She's my favorite character. And it has Kylo Ren's lightsaber as the hilt, which is really, really cool. And I love it, so have to display it somehow, and it lives on the shelf for right now. This, I don't remember where I got it. I want to say Barnes & Noble. It is actually a replica of Kylo Ren's ship, and you can move the wings up and down, make it whatever direction you want, and it's got its own little stand. I think it looks really cool with my sci-fi books, especially because most of them take place in space. And then I have Rey and Kylo, and my favorite Rey and Kylo fan art that I've ever seen. It is to die for. It is, it is immaculate. And that is it for my sci-fi books, so let's go down to the next shelf and see what the next genre is going to be. All right, on to the next shelf down. As you can kind of tell, this is the start of my paranormal shelves. This shelf, I 
very much love the way it turned out. I love the aesthetics of it. All the way over to the left we have The Glittering Court by Rochelle Mead. I have not read that surprisingly enough since I love Rochelle Mead, I just have not quite gotten there. But then we also have The Beautiful and the Damned by Renee Audier. Those are out of order, I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> I will fix that later. And then we have Belle Mort. The only one that's out of place on this shelf is the Sandcastle Empire, and that's because you'll kind of see it doesn't quite fit down below. So just disregard that. It is, it's not paranormal. Directly below that we have the Hush Hush series. I love the Hush Hush series. I don't know if it's actually amazing or if I just read it at the right time, but I love, love, love the Hush Hush series. Just directly over, we have the Twilight series. These are alternate dust jackets. I do not remember where they came from. I want to say the book is shop, but I don't recall. But they're absolutely stunning. I adore these editions. I love the way the spines look. If you pull them off the shelf, it's got very pretty writing on it, and then it's got a quote on the back. This one says, look after your heart. I've left it with you. I am a big fan of these books and these alternate dust jackets all together. We've got Breaking Dawn. It's just stunning. And then directly over to the right, we have Crave by Tracy Wolf. I don't know if you guys have read this series yet. It's marketed for Twilight fans, but personally, I think it is more directly related to the Vampire Academy. I think it's the a modern day Vampire Academy with modern day relevant jokes and references. But it's very, very good. I absolutely love the series. I do have two editions of Court because at this point I started collecting multiple editions. I bought a regular edition, which actually I think I bought the Barnes & Noble edition. And then I found the Books A Million edition. This one is the Walmart exclusive edition. So it's one of those series where I don't really know which edition I should be getting. And now I have two copies of Court and I don't know what to do. If I should keep it, if I should continue collecting all the editions, I don't know. The only thing that I can tell that's different is there's bonus content. And then certain ones, like the Barnes & Noble exclusive, they have a different court on the inside. So the end pages are different with a different crest and a different color. So I'm going to make up my mind about that later on. But highly recommend that series. I love this shelf. These art prints are from the Crave series. I adore them. They're, they're just perfect, and I, I love the color scheme. So, And it, it ties in well with the uh, Beautiful and the Damned. So, oh, you can barely see them. Sorry about the bright light. This is the art that I was talking about. They're so cute. And let's move down one shelf to the next one. All right, this is the next shelf down. This is a continuation of my paranormal shelves, but it is also a slight introduction to some gothic books. So all the way to the far left, we have a continuation of paranormal books with the Ember of the Night trilogy by Molly E. Lee. We also have this really cool cup that my best friend got me. You can barely tell, but it's a silhouette of Kylo Ren. And the back says, a buddy of mine saw Kylo Ren take his shirt off in the shower. And he said that Kylo Ren had an eight pack, that Kylo Ren was shredded. And if you know where this is from, we are officially best friends, but. This makes me cackle. I love this cup so much. <laughs> it's so funny to me. And I just thought the purples went really well over here. I have this really cool cover edition of Midnight Sun. I think it's really pretty. Definitely not how I picture the characters at all, but I do think it's a pretty book. So it lives over here with the other purple ones. I have Midnight Sun, the Twilight 10th Anniversary Edition, The Host by Stephanie Meyer. If you have ever wanted to read a Stephanie Meyer book, make it this one. Technically, this is sci-fi. I need to move this up. We're not going to talk about it. This is in the wrong spot, but this is an amazing book. Please read it. Paranormal, The Coldest Girl in Cold Town, one of the best vampire books I've ever read. I think it's the most accurate representation of what vampires in our world would look like and how we would live amongst vampires. So, so good. It's a standalone. Please read it, including this book, which is a newer one on my shelf. It's absolutely gorgeous. But including The Whispering Dark, it's just on the top because it blends better. Um, White Fox, Tenth Girl, and Over. These are more of the gothic books I was talking about. The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. Oh, if you want a dark book that's kind of mystery thriller, this is the one. This is one of my favorite books. I wish I could read it, read this again for the first time. I wish I didn't know the twist. I wish I could read it again with fresh eyes. It is phenomenal. I actually wanted to reread it this year for spooky season. I just didn't get around to it. 
but I love this book. Sarah Faring is so talented. And then I have this really cool art print and I thought that it tied in the red with Twilight and the reds and the purples over there. So I stuck it over here with some more of my like darker, grimmer looking books. Over here have a bunch of books that I really want to get to. I really want to get to within these wicked walls. Tell me that this cover is not stunning. It's, it's stunning. I also got this secondhand. You can tell by the orange sticker. And then these two are a couple of my newest books that I got in subscription boxes. This one is the one I'm most excited to read. It's called The Book Eaters. And wow, is it pretty. It's absolutely stunning. So this is high on my list. I have The Drowned Woods and The Bone Houses. The Drowned Woods is still in its plastic. I haven't taken it out yet, but it's an Owlcrate exclusive. And Sawkill Girls, if you're looking for a very spooky, very, very dark book, this is another one I recommend. This is a phenomenal book. I think I tabbed this one. No, I didn't. I think I tabbed the advanced reader copy of it. But this book is phenomenal. I adore Claire Legrand. It's definitely a creepy book, though. So, read with caution, but it's great. So, that is the end of this kind of theme for most of these. It went from, you know, urban fantasy to sci-fi to paranormal to gothic, and I thought that all of those themes kind of went really well together. Okay, so technically there is one more shelf directly below this shelf, but I'm not going to go straight down. I'm actually going to go over to the right over here, because technically the shelf directly below is part of a larger wraparound. So we're going to go one shelf to the right, and it will make a little bit more sense. So I'll see you over there. So this is the very first shelf on my contemporary shelves. There is not much rhyme or reason to the very beginning set of shelves. As you can kind of see, what I ended up doing was keeping a lot of authors together. So technically, the selection series could have gone on my royalty shelves, but they look a little bit more contemporary. I wanted to keep them over here especially because it just kind of fit the vibe. So technically, they're not contemporary. They're technically actually dystopian, but uh, they live over here on my contemporary shelves, as does The Siren by Kira Cass, because I wanted to keep all of her books together. That technically could go on my C shelf, but alas, here we are. So on this shelf, essentially, I do have like all my Kira Cass books together. I have all my Gail Foreman books together because I love Gail Foreman. One of my favorite, favorite series is the If I Stay series. I just noticed it's out of order. We're not gonna look at that either. But specifically where she went is my favorite, favorite, favorite. I read it almost once a year when I can. Over here to the left, I have a Stars Hollow mug. This is a new edition. It is a pre-order incentive that I got. It's an hourglass that says the first to die at the end for Adam Silvera, which is this book right here. I have this really amazing bookmark. It says it's a metaphor and it has a drawn cigarette on it. And this was actually just a bookmark somebody had shoved into one of John Green's books and sold at a secondhand bookstore. So when I bought the book, I kept the bookmark. I have all of my Adam Silvera books over here as well as all of my John Green books over here. This specifically is my favorite favorite and one of my favorites in my collection. This is The Fault in Our Stars and as you can see it's a green edition. It's a Don't Forget to Be Awesome exclusive edition, the DFTBA, which is uh, one of the things that John Green and his brother Hank Green do together and essentially every year they sell merchandise that's exclusive merchandise and the money that you spend on the merchandise gets donated to a charity and I believe that people get to vote on it. I was not a part of this. This was a 2014 exclusive edition DFTBA version. It is so cool. I'm actually going to pull it out for you. I found it at a secondhand bookstore. I believe originally you had to spend like $250 or $300 on it to be able to get a copy and all that money did go to charity. It's part of Project for Awesome. But somebody decided to get rid of it, and my secondhand bookstore, I guess, didn't know how valuable it was and was selling it for $25. And it's really cool. The back is hilarious. It says, 
Dear reader, thank you for donating to the 2014 Project for Awesome. Your contribution will be distributed as grants by the Foundation to decrease world suck to charities so they can continue to grow and work in the global community. In exchange for your kindness, please accept this book about teenagers who meet at a support group with some sad bits and hopefully some not sad bits, which you can, one, use to fix wobbly tables, two, place on the head of your dog, cat, llama to improve posture, fashion as a festive roof for your gingerbread house, Provide as a pillow for robots. Robots hate soft pillows. Position underneath your laptop to prevent it from overheating. Whip out as a shield during food fights. Hold over your head in rainstorms. Butter one side to race against another friend's buttered book. Use as a doorstop. Put on your own head to make you feel better after a bad day. Or you could read it. Thank you again for taking part in the 2014 Project for Awesome. And as we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome. Best wishes, John Green. And as it is green, it is also signed in green, which is really cool. And I can't believe somebody got rid of this. I think it's just so cool and such a really neat piece to have, especially because I love John Green so much. I'm so excited to have it. And it's one of my favorite editions that I own. And then I also have the collector's edition of The Fault in Our Stars and other editions of his books. One of my favorite recent ones is The Anthropocene Reviewed. I devoured this book. It's a signed edition. You can see all of my sticky tabs. There's quite a number of them. And this one is also signed. And this one was a really cool one that I found. He signed it with his name and then he signed it DFTBA, which again stands for Don't Forget to Be Awesome. And I just absolutely adored this book. And I am a big fan of his book, so glad I found it. And then, essentially, what happens is, is after I get through all of my collection pieces, and partially here's some more John Green, then it goes into like beigey colors and into white, and the rest of my contemporary shelves you will see are organized in a rainbow. So we will get to that in just a moment. There are two copies of Turtles All the Way Down because one copy I bought originally as the signed copy. They're both signed copies. One of them I bought, let's see, yeah. One of them, it's this one, I pre-ordered and it came with a standard signature, purple. And then this one I found at, I believe, a Barnes & Noble and it said DFTBA and I had to keep that one too. So I do have two copies of it. And then I have this really cool Turtles All The Way Down magnet or pin, pin, <laughs> that I received and I adore it. So it lives right next to its books. And that's about it for this section, so let's move on and you can start to see the beginning of the rainbow. Alright, we are one shelf over and as you can see it goes from the beigey white to the white to some soft pinks into some reds and you can kind of start to see a little bit of the rainbow I was talking about. These are just all of my contemporary books. Quite a few of these I have read, there are quite a few that I have not read. But I am a huge fan of the way these shelves look. I have read Again But Better by Christine Riccio and Better Together. I loved both. I think I preferred Better Together, but they're both fantastic. I'm very eager to get to Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. That has been on my TBR for a while. I got the Book of the Month edition as soon as I saw it. It was available. I had to get it. I have this really adorable Valentine's Day Mandalorian Funko Pop and he's holding a little Valentine and it says to Grogu love Mando and I put this over here because the pink and the red together really blend nicely with the shelf and I didn't really have anywhere else he fit. I have this little Weston Bakery mug that my best friend got me. It's a Gilmore Girls reference as is this of course. No cell phones. I think that this is just so cute and funny and it fits really well in the library. I have this really cool Battle of the Bands lanyard, and essentially it's got tour dates, quote unquote, but it's just got all of the authors who were involved in the book. The book is Battle of the Bands by Eric Smith, and also a lot of other authors. And I really loved that book, and it was something he gave out when I met him at Y'all Fest. He's one of my favorite contemporary authors. And then there's this, if you can see it. This was my lucky lizard when I was a kid and it has been through. It has seen some things. It has one eye and it was my lucky lizard and I've kept it all these years and its color scheme goes really well with the shelf so my lucky lizard 
still kicking, still goes there. And then it fades into some like dark pinks into some reds. The Black Flamingo, one of my favorite books. It is phenomenal if you haven't read it. I highly recommend. I loved Punching the Air. I loved Girl Gone Viral. Dash and Lily, I haven't read yet, but I loved, loved, loved the TV show for it. Ugh, Darius the Great deserves better and Darius the Great is not okay, which I believe is a little bit further down. Two of my all-time favorites. Absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, that is about it for this shelf. Let's move on to the next one. All right, now we are moving to the next shelf over. This shelf is interesting. It is reds faded into oranges. I really like the aesthetic of it. However, I apparently have a lot of orange knickknacks, so that's why it's a little bit chaotic over here. Back here I have The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher. I'm a huge, huge fan of that book. I'm a huge fan of Carrie. I had to have it in my collection. I actually read that book when I was still working in Disney World. Little Women is one of my all-time favorites, and I just loved this edition. This is actually the book that you see in the latest movie adaptation. It looks almost the same as the book that Joe writes in the movie. And I just loved it, loved it, loved it, wanted it for my collection. It's so nice. Here, this is kind of a special story. <laughs> this is Danielle Steele's book, Zoya. And I've never read it. I've never read a single Danielle Steele book. But my mom knew of Danielle Steele and I believe liked Danielle Steele. And she always liked the name Danielle. And when she went into labor with me, she actually saw a copy of this book in the waiting room the day that she was going to have me. And she didn't know what she was going to name me at that time. She thought she still had a little time because I came an entire month early. I was supposed to be born June 28th and I was born June 1st. So when she saw this book sitting on the waiting room table, she thought it was a sign that she should name me Danielle. And she named me Danielle after Danielle Steele. And I think that it's such a cool little story to tell and such a cool little thing to have. I found this copy and... I had to get it because one day I will read it. I haven't read a single Danielle Steele book yet. It kind of feels like maybe I shouldn't just because I haven't for so long, but I definitely have to read Zoya, especially because this is the book I was named after. I don't believe my mom's read this book, <laughs> funnily enough. I just think it happened to be the one that was sitting on the table and she had already heard of Danielle Steele and liked her name and liked Danielle Steele, so it's just interesting but I think it's definitely an important part of my shelves and then directly behind here I have a lot more <laughs> red books I have Darius the Great is Not Okay which is one of my all-time favorite books Zara Hussein is here is phenomenal I actually listened to the audiobook of this last year I really liked it I have not read Here's to Us yet but I have read What If It's Us and I really enjoyed What If It's Us and then my Mandalorian book lives here because it's kind of orangish and I don't know where to put it General Hux love him and he's a ginger like me so he's in the orange shelf my boy poe love and poe has to obviously be with bb8 it just makes sense the sun is also a star is one of my all-time favorite books it's so so good this is a darth vader card that my best friend got me because it's orange and she knows i love star wars so it was perfect and this is the section it has to go in because it fits here this is just a typical hourglass it's orange which is my favorite color and i absolutely love it a friend of mine got it for me for one christmas because after my grandma passed away she had an hourglass i always used to love as a kid and when it got sent to me after she passed it was broken in the mail and my best friend at the time got me this hourglass to kind of take its place and so that I still had an hourglass because I was really bummed and got it my favorite color so it's it's special to me and it fits the vibes over here so that's where it lives. <laughs> over here some more orange books again BB-8. The book I'm most excited to get to is How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days over in the corner. <laughs> I love Keanu Reeves and it just sounds amazing. My favorite book in this stack here is absolutely Furia. I, I just absolutely adored it. I read it so fast and that's kind of it for this shelf. So uh Let's go down one more shelf. As you can kind of see, it's going to fade into yellow, so let's go down a shelf. This is our yellow shelf. I do have two Luke's mugs. <laughs> one of them I bought with the rest of the set that I have that you've been seeing on my shelves, and the other one actually was part of a, an Ulta makeup bag kit that I got. 
so it just holds bookmarks for now. There are quite a few books on here that I'm eager to get to, and there are quite a few on here that I've loved. Some of my favorite, favorite books on the shelf are I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. That is a must-read book. It is absolutely heart-wrenching in the best way possible. <laughs> I highly, highly recommend. This is also a really cool little bookmark that came in a subscription box. It has Kylo on the other side, and I really like the way that Rey looks with her little yellow lightsaber in the sunset, so she lives here. One of my all-time favorite books is on the shelf. It is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. I have the special edition and the books of book of the month edition. This is the Waterstones exclusive signed edition. This book blew me away. The premise of it sounded amazing. I first heard about it from Book of the Month, and I believe my copy is super sticky tabbed. Oh yeah. You can kind of see, and I actually sticky tabbed it in a rainbow, which you can't really see, but all the tabs are in a rainbow, which is pretty cool. I tried to like do the rainbow to match the rainbow on the cover, which I love. This book devastated me, <laughs> tore me open, and made me new again. I absolutely adored it. If you read it, please tell me because I need somebody to talk about it with. None of my friends have read it. And I really, really, really want to talk about it with somebody. Yeah, that is essentially it for this shelf. This is my next shelf over. As you could probably guess, it faded from yellow into some greens and into some blues. I really, really, really love the way that this shelf looks. I'm a huge fan of it. Again, a couple of my favorite books are on here. One of my favorite books is We Are the Ants. It's directly behind Grogu. And I, if I could read that book again for the first time, I absolutely would. So, so, so good. This little Grogu, I absolutely adore. It was actually given to me when I was working at one of my previous jobs. One of the customers I was really close with was kind enough to give it to me, and it's just, I love him so, so much. This is another one of those mugs that I was telling you about, the same as The Mandalorian. It's a Starbucks exclusive Disney mug that has The Last Jedi on it, and I love The Last Jedi, so... Had to get that one, of course, and it matches the color scheme perfectly. As for favorites over here, again, we are the ants, but also An Emotion of Great Delight by Tehada Mafi was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Jagged Little Pill by Eric Smith, absolutely phenomenal. I did absolutely love Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston as well. And there are just so many books over here that I'm dying to get to. My other favorite on the shelf is Down and Across by Arvind Amati. If you have not read this book, this is another one of those books that I think everybody needs to read. Down and Across is immaculate. Absolutely immaculate. I feel like it completely changed me after I read it, so... Highly, highly recommend Down and Across by Arvind Amati. I do have a Chilton mug down here that went with my Gilmore Girls set that I told you about, and I do have that really cool Stars Hollow sign from Gilmore Girls. That I bought at a bookstore, and it actually comes with batteries and you can actually light the sign up and you can make the sign either stay lit or slow fade in and out. It's really cute. It goes with the blue books. So that's where it lives. And let's move down the line to the next set. All right, on to the next set of shelves. This is another shelf that's mostly blues and it will ultimately fade into the purples, which you will see a little bit over there, but you'll also see on the next shelf we get to. I love this shelf as well. One of my favorite knickknacks of all time is on the shelf, and that is Stitch, and I'm a huge fan of Lilo and Stitch, if you ask any of my friends, but specifically, Stitch is reading The Ugly Duckling, and you can see the pages he's reading, and that is my favorite scene in Stitch, and I can't believe I found a little knickknack for it. It's perfect, he's reading a book, but again, it's, it means a lot to me, and yeah, I found this, I think, at Books A Million, so... Stitch lives with my blue books. And then you can see the blue mug down there. You might be familiar with the symbol. It is actually the symbol for Hachette Books. I did an internship with Running Press back in the day and part of my welcome package was the Hachette mug and it's special. It means a lot to me. It was a really cool experience and I'm super happy it's on my shelf. As for some of my favorites, I love Murder on the Orient Express. I haven't taken this out of its plastic yet because I don't want to damage it, but I did buy the Barnes & Noble Exclusive Edition, which is what that one is. The Love Hypothesis is one of my favorites as well, because if you didn't know, it is a Raylo-inspired story, and I love Ray and Kylo, clearly. I mean, you've seen enough of my stuff to be able to tell that. All the Bright Places, 
huge, huge fan of that. Don't read the comments, absolutely adore that book. Fleabag, the scriptures. If you like Fleabag the show, if you haven't seen Fleabag, like, please watch Fleabag. But that is word for word the show and it's amazing. I went on a hunt for that book and I'm so, so glad I have it. Other books that I really love on the shelf, Call It What You Want by Bridget Kemmerer is phenomenal as is Letters to the Lost, which is directly behind the Hachette mug. I also really, really love The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. It is covered in annotations because it's, it's tabbed with all of my favorite quotes. I absolutely adored that book. I devoured it. I do recommend not reading that though if you're not in a good place because it's a very sad and dark book but it's it's very good. Over to the left where the purple books are, You Can Go Your Own Way by Eric Smith is another one of my favorites as I told you. I don't think there's a book that he will ever write that I dislike at this point in my life but yeah I absolutely adore that book. It definitely hit me in the right spot and it's it's so good. I look back on it fondly, so definitely pick that one up if you if you ever need to, to feel something. And then a little bit below that, My So-Called Bollywood Life by Nisha Sharma is also amazing. A quick read, but also a really, really good one. And that's about it for this shelf. So let's move over to the last set of contemporary books. This is the very last shelf for my contemporary shelves. We are all the way back over to the left set of bookcases because as I mentioned to you before, the contemporary shelves kind of wrapped around and this is the end of it. This goes from the purples where we were before into some light purples, into some gray, and then into some black books to wrap up the shelf. This Narcos book, please disregard, I have nowhere to put this. It matches the color scheme. It is extremely tall. And technically, it takes place in our world today, so just to, we're just going to ignore that. But back here, Battle of the Bands by Eric Smith. Love, love, love that book. Ivory and Bone by Julie Eshbaugh is great. The Outsiders is over here, which I also really loved. And the 50th anniversary edition of The Outsiders, Once and for All by Sarah Dessen, is a phenomenal contemporary. More Than We Can Tell by Bridget Kimmerer ripped my heart out. On the topic of ripping my heart out, The Art of Breaking Things ripped my heart out. <laughs> This this is definitely a uh, a painful shelf, but so many good books on the shelf. I've got the Dragonfly Inn mug, which I really, really love, and yeah, that's pretty much it for my contemporary books. Let's move on to our last bookshelf. All right, starting up on the very top right-hand shelf, the last shelf we're going to go through is my Harry Potter collection. This is a set of books that I've been collecting since I was younger. I'm not currently adding to my collection because I do not want to support the author. However, these two editions here are new editions that my mom did get me for my birthday last year. It's very special to me because it came from my mom, but all of these books are things that I've had in my collection for years. This little Triwizard Cup is actually another thing that's pretty important to me because as a graduation present from my parents, I got to go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and that was something I bought myself. It lights up. I bought it as kind of like, hey, like you're a champion. You completed your education. Congratulations. Other than that, all of these things are things I've had in my collection for years. The standard series is directly behind and it's not something that I'm continuing to add to my collection except for, as I said, these two, which were gifts from my mom last year, so they are special to me. And that is about it for this shelf, and that's about all I'm going to go into with this shelf. Alright, this next shelf down is actually the beginning of the last genre that you are going to see, and that is my magic books. So all of these books in some way or another have magic related to them. I really, really love this shelf. I actually love the next set of shelves you're going to see. I think that they are my most aesthetically pleasing. I'm very proud of how they look. I've got some favorites on here. Sorcery of Thorns is one of them. I absolutely adored Sorcery of Thorns. The Truth Witch series, if you've not read this, I highly recommend this. This is, this is immaculate. This is what I think of when I think high fantasy and she did such an incredible job with this series. This is an art print from the Truth Witch series and this is also a pin from Witch, Sh Witch Shadow, which is the latest book in the Truth Witch series. And then we move over here, we have A Song of Wraiths and Ruin, 
A Psalm of Storms and Silence, which is steeped in gold. I have two editions because one of them is the Owl Crate Exclusive Edition. I do want to say the prettiest book on this shelf is probably We All Fall Down. The green and the orange and the edges. Oh, it's just so stunning. I'm actually very excited to get to that book as well. And then I have Oogie Boogie and Oogie Boogie just lives over here because I don't really know what to do with him, but he's adorable, so I can't really get rid of him. <laughs> and uh, that's that. So let's move on to the next shelf down. This is another shelf I'm extremely proud of. I just think the color scheme and the vibes are just there. They're immaculate. I have this Starbucks cup that I actually got when I was visiting a friend and I just like the color scheme. It actually glows in the dark and I thought it kind of fit with the vibes here. But behind it I have Children of Blood and Bone. I have a couple different editions of this. You've seen it throughout my shelves. These are the collector's edition from Barnes & Noble. They had them on sale. I did not want to buy them full price, but they were on sale for, I think, $10 a piece at one point, and I ended up snagging them. And they just go so beautifully on the shelf. This is a recent art print I got in my most recent fairy loot box. It's the one that's also on the V.E. Schwab shelf, but this is the full-size print, and I just thought it, it looked so stunning over here, so... That's where it lives. Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller was phenomenal. I'm very excited to get to Lobizona. And behind here, we've got some more great books. I'm excited to get to This Woven Kingdom by Tahedda Mafi. I absolutely love her writing. I'm very excited to get to Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I met him last year at Y'all Fest, and he was so nice, and that book sounds amazing. We have the Serpent and Dove trilogy back here, another tarot card, and then a mug that came in one of the bookish subscription boxes that I thought was really pretty and kind of fit the aesthetic. That is it for this shelf. Let's move down to the next one. Okay, I know I keep saying this, but this is also one of my favorites. I think that the shelf is just so pretty. I definitely have room to grow, which is lovely. I think one of my favorite pieces of this shelf is this Great Libraries tin. I do not remember where it came from. It was either an Illumicrate or a Fairy Loot, and I want to say it is Illumicrate. It just looks so pretty. I can put bookmarks in it if I want, but I just love the way it looks. And so it kind of lives up here for now. I have another one of those Owlcrate luggage collection pieces. This one is Beware of the Blood Forest, and I just think it fits so beautifully right over here. I have the first two books in Neil Patrick Harris's duology or series. I'm not sure which one it is. I ended up meeting him at BookCon before BookCon unfortunately got shut down and he did sign the books for me and I'm very very happy to have met him and to have signed books. I think it's just so neat. Over here too I really really love Crown of Oblivion by Julie Eshbaugh. I think it's a great great book. Somewhere on my shelves I have The Blood Air. Don't know where. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> but I have the sequel as well so that's interesting. I'll have to figure that out. I also could have sworn I have the raven somewhere. You've probably seen it. Oh, it's two shelves up. I split them up because the color schemes didn't match. That makes sense. It's so much fun when you rearrange your shelves and you don't know where anything is. But yeah, that's basically it for this shelf. I'm very excited to read City of Dusk by Tara Sim. And honestly, The Heart of the Impaler sounds good too. But yeah, let's uh, let's move on. The next shelf down is our last shelf. Apologies, you're kind of at another angle for this one, but I really also like this shelf. I know I sound like a broken record. It's got Children of Blood and Bone and Children of Virtue and Vengeance, and then it's got the other special edition of Children of Blood and Bone that I told you about and I just think it looks so, so pretty, all these blues together. I really, really like this. It's an hourglass, and it says, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour, and it's a magnetic hourglass, so when you flip it upside down, the sand kind of makes interesting little, you can kind of see it, but the sand sticks up and pokes up because of the magnets. It's really cool. This is the newest addition to this shelf, and I think it is one of the prettiest books I've ever seen. And I really am happy that I got it before my bookshelf tour because it really ties all of these colors in together. The other recent addition is The Sunbearer Trials by Aidan Thomas. I got this at Y'all Fest, and honestly, before I got this book, the colors did not really tie in at all, and I did not know where to put it, so very pleased that I got this one. I have read Luminous by Mara Rutherford and really liked it. And the one that I'm most excited to read on this shelf is actually The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. I just got that in a book box. It is stunning. It's a special edition. 
And then I guess my other favorite piece of this shelf is these Illumicrate reading prompt cards. There are a bunch of different cards that give you prompts on what book you should pick up next if you're not sure. And they're so cute and they look so cute on the shelf and I love them. But that is about it for the shelf. So now I'm going to take you to the center of these two bookcases and show you my favorites display. So let's do that. So the next set of shelves I'm going to show you are actually right between the other two that we just toured through. You saw the one on the, the very far left, which is my urban fantasy, paranormal, and sci-fi. And then on the right was all of my witch and magic books. And then directly below was all of my contemporary books. And now I'm going to go through and show you my collection of my favorites and give you a up-close, in-depth tour of this. All right, this is the very first section on my favorites display. Over to the left is, as you can tell, a Pirates of the Caribbean section. In the backhand corner, you can see a picture frame that is Jack Sparrow and Will Turner, and it's actually signed. When I was 12 years old, my dad and my mom purchased that for me for Christmas, and it came with a certificate of authenticity, and it is one of my most prized possessions, and I'm so happy I finally have a place to display it. And directly in front of that is actually a replica of the Black Pearl. The replica of the Black Pearl, there were only 500 of them made. It has been through the ringer because I've had it since I was 12. It's something I've kept with me through all of these years, through all the moves I've been through, and it's something I don't think I'll ever get rid of. I absolutely love it. I recently added my Jack Sparrow Funko Pop inside because it's adorable and funny. I have a replica of Jack Sparrow's ring, which I really love. I actually got this in Disney World. And in the back, I actually have a jar of dirt that I made myself. And inside, there's also a little heart jewel. And I actually made one for me. My best friend made one for her when I moved to Disney, so she had one too. And then I ended up making another one for Jack Sparrow, who was in Disney World at the time when I met him. And... I gave it to him and years later I ran into him again and he told me that he has kept the jar after all these years and it sits in his office so it's pretty cool. Alright so this is the beginning of my Lord of the Rings collection. I have this really cool acrylic stand which has a lot of famous quotes from Lord of the Rings which I really really love and I have these really stunning editions of the Lord of the Rings that the publisher was kind enough to send me. I adore them. I'm reading through them again and they're just so stunning. Going up, I'm not going to pull them out, but these are from Owl Crate. They are bowls that are inspired by different places in the Lord of the Rings series. And at the very top of my Lord of the Rings collection, I have this really cool Fungo Pop of Frodo Baggins in his invisible form when he's wearing the ring. I really, really love this one. It's a Barnes & Noble exclusive. I saw it and I immediately snagged it. I was like, you're coming home with me. And he did. And now he lives at the top of my Lord of the Rings collection. The next set of favorites is my Dune collection. I have all the Funko Pops from the movie. I saw the movie. I loved the movie. I cannot wait for Dune Part 2 especially because I know what's coming in the books. So that'll be interesting. And then my favorite part of this collection is to the left my Waterstones exclusive edition of Dune with the really pretty stenciled edges. It is stunning and I'm so so glad I was able to get my hands on one. Moving over we have the start of my Star Wars collection and if you know me you know I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. At the bottom here we have Kylo Ren on the left, we have Phasma, and then we have Mando with Grogu over on the right. Right in the center there's a picture of me and my dear friend Jen when I was doing my Disney College program. I got to meet Kylo and I drew him some fan art to give him and I was wearing a lightsaber on my hip with my OK But Adam Driver Though shirt, and it just so happened to be a very special day because Phasma was there, and Phasma never goes to meet and greets, and I absolutely cried. So that picture means a lot to me. And directly above that, if you can see, there is the book Phasma by Delilah S. Dawson. That is a book I highly recommend to any single person who's ever seen Star Wars. Phasma and her story is insanely good. I tell everybody it's Mad Max Fury Road meets Star Wars. It is one of my favorite books I've ever read to date. I'm actually going to reread it soon so that I can annotate it, but I adored that book. That book blew me away, literally, and the girl in the picture, Jen, who is so wonderful, actually bought me a copy of that book. The next little section over here is some more books on the left. 
as well as my Grogu. I actually bought this Grogu from Target. He comes with a little remote control and you can have him do certain things. He can also follow you around the room. He can use the force. He's just adorable and it's great that he has a spot to sit now. So love that for him. And then at the very top I have a really really cool Darth Vader bookend that I got from the Hallmark store and he's using the force to keep my book up and directly below that he is sitting on my Star Wars affirmations cards which I got from Box Lunch and I absolutely adore them. That is it for my Star Wars stock. Over to the right here is perhaps my absolute favorite section of my shelves because if you didn't know I am a huge huge fan of Moon Knight. It is my favorite thing in Marvel now, ever. I have watched it way too many times to count. I have bought every single piece of merchandise I can find and I just am in love and obsessed and I didn't know how to display my Moon Knight things and it occurred to me, why don't I take some of my superhero books and actually display them with my Moon Knight merchandise because they're all superheroes. Starting right over here on the left, I have this really cool limited edition Funko Pop of Scarlet Scarab, and I absolutely love Layla, so I had to have it. And then directly to the right of her is a giant Conchu Funko Pop, and my friends convinced me to get this. I didn't know if I wanted to spend the money, but now I'm so glad I did because I love coming in here and just making his head bobble, and he's also just so massive for absolutely no reason, and it makes me laugh. Moving directly over, I have this really cool Stephen Grant candle. I absolutely adore it because I love Stephen. I have a Fungo Pop of Harrow, of Amit, I have a Layla. And then moving directly up, as I said, I do have some of my superhero books here. I have the Renegades trilogy, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Loki. And then, of course, it fades into Moon Knight. I have a comic book over here that my best friend got me. I'm so excited I have this. I have this really, really cool Moon Knight pin. Look how cool that is. Are you kidding? And then I have, of course, a Polaroid of Stephen Grant. I have another Moon Knight pin that I got from Box Lunch. I have this really, really cool comic book edition Moon Knight Funko Pop that I really love. It's ridiculously large, but I'm here for it. You can see it here. And directly at the top, I have my boys. I have <laughs> Mr. Knight and Moon Knight, and I love them. I love them together. I think they are so cute and so adorable, and this is absolutely my favorite section of my bookshelves. That is it for my 2022 bookshelf tour. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far, and hopefully you enjoyed looking through my shelves as much as I enjoyed capturing them. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you either got some inspiration or you just had a little bit of fun relaxing with this on in the background. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I can't wait to see you in my next one. Bye guys. Probably should have dusted before I started touring my shelves. Oh well, it's time for a nap. Did you just hear my hip pop? Cause I felt that. Oof. All in a day's work. Bye!